Napa know-how. A Napa guy knows more isn't always better. Unless we're talking about full-size vans. These beasts do more than get you from A to B. They have so much space a man can live in it. With shag carpeting, water bed, and a sweet lava lamp, these mobile abodes have all the comforts of home. With quality parts and plenty of Napa know-how, you can keep the original tiny house running longer, stronger. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Welcome to the war room. We got Tez, Q, Jimmy, PJ, B. Austin, the hot block commander. How you wanna end up one or two hour show to keep the brain running with the premise to talk sports on a national level? Both with the topic, sort of like the rubber. When it's game time, they like the fad five doing prime time. Sports conglomerates to speak their minds a little bit. For sports medicine and sports veterans and great. The 4 for 26, so the war ain't can wait. It's the war room with five nights at the round table. Five silly guys, diversified and educated. Yup. What's good, War Room family? You're once again live in the War Room, brought to you by War Room Sports on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. I'm your man, Devin McMillan. I'm at the round table with JW The Blueprint and that dude, B. Austin. This wild NBA regular season has concluded, so now it's time to talk about the playoffs and those NBA awards if we get to them. So keep it locked wow. right here for the next two hours, and if you want to highlight us throughout the show, join us right now in the JW Philly Realty chat room at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room. Or join us on Facebook or Twitter at War Room Sports. You can also call us directly when we open up the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline in about 30 minutes. That number is 323-410-0012. But before we get started, we got to put something on them bills. Throughout the week, be sure to check out the War Room Sports Podcast Network. Besides our own podcast, The War Room, you can also listen to shows such as The Broad Street Line and The Broad Street Line Express with Roy and Chris. The Tissue and the Tape Hip Hop Show with Phil Maddock and Savad. John Appetit for all you foodies out there with the Burtons, the No Look Podcast, where you'll get tons of NBA content with Frank and Andy. Bump and Run for all you NASCAR heads with Robin Vandenberg and crew. On the Couch with the Wilsons for you movie heads and TV heads. Retro Action Sports Show and a whole lot more. Just visit WorldRoomSports.com, click on that WS Podcast Network tab, or go to our free mobile app and click the Network tab there. Yo, fellas, this show is a little bit overbooked, so um, people out there need to do as we say before you get dragged. What up, homies? Yo, Damn, you on your drunk dish? <laughs> Telling people what they what they can and can't do. What you gonna drop? No, a I'm, on my, I'm on my my FAA American, I mean United Airlines type dish. Oh, yeah. United, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they down with Trump, though. All I'm saying is, man, like, you don't know what's going to happen in this world. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, ladies, you know what I mean? Y'all know my at name, just in case this world has to end. Yo, what's up with your man, though? He over there dropping bombs on Afghanistan. Like, this is stuff that, like, I don't know. I mean, I follow news enough, but it's like, okay, this just kind of happened out of the blue, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Um did y'all get fair warning for Team this? America, F yeah. We can drop a bomb whenever we want to. <laughs> yeah, they said this was like the largest non-nuclear bomb that the U.S. has ever dropped. It's wartime, fellas. It's wartime. Yeah, your man letting them hands fly, man. Like, yo, it's, it's like he King Petty, and it's like whatever with him, yo. Something, yo, yo it's scary probably, time. Boxer, it's probably yo. something. It's probably Steve. it's probably because some one of them one of them Haji said something about him on Twitter. Yo, so, all right, all right. Yo, he I like a boxer. Steve Bannon over there telling him, "Let your hands go, let your hands go." <laughs> it's crazy. It is crazy out there. All right, man. So let let's get into this because we got a lot of stuff that we need to talk about in this rundown. So Jimmy, why don't you let everybody know what happened this week? While they were on that good grind. Absolutely. And while you were on the grind, it's brought to you by Direct TV. If you'd like a better TV experience than cable has to offer, including NFL Sunday Ticket, go to our website at warroomsports.com and click on that Direct TV logo. Don't pay attention to anything we said last week. Just get your Direct TV at warroomsports.com, click on that logo, 
Let's go. It's time yeah. to talk about what Cable happened. Cable boxes ain't going nowhere. Shout out to you. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo. Fire stick cut the check. Yo, um, it's time to talk about what happened while you want to grind, though. And uh, the first thing I want to bring up is salute to LeBron Raymond James, who's opening up a school for at risk youth in Akron. I mean, LeBron has done a lot of things in the city of Akron. I mean, I know you was getting no money in Akron, Jay Ree. But uh, LeBron, nonetheless, you know, he's the king of Akron, and he's, he's showing it. He's he's putting his money where his mouth is, and he's doing things to build up that community. So I want to say salute to LeBron for that because that will last a lot longer uh, than your quest to, uh, ch- you know, compete against shadows. Yeah. No doubt. Definitely um, salute to LeBron. You know, we, we – talk about sports for a living and you know we praise athletes we criticize athletes and LeBron has had you know he's been on both sides of that spectrum here but you know one thing especially you know for myself when I hear something like this and it you know it doesn't matter who it is you know this is something that's salute worthy um he's uh teaming up with Akron Public Schools and the school is called I Promise School and is dedicated to like Jimmy said aiding at-risk children who might otherwise be left behind. Um, LeBron says in a quote, this school is so important to me because our vision is to create a place for the kids in Akron who need it most. Those that could fall through the cracks if we don't do something. We've learned over the years what works and what motivates them. And now we can bring all of that together in one place with the right resources and experts. If we get them early enough, we can hopefully keep them on the right track to a bigger and brighter future for themselves and their families. So to LeBron, I say that's what's up, homie. It'd be awesome. Uh, you got anything you want to say about Raymond? Um, yo, Raymond, man, God bless. Great move. Um, you know, although you choose to rest on the job and get paid one of the highest rates ever, you gotta salute the brother for what he does with his funds and with his money off the court. Um, whether it's contrived or not, which I've always kind of, <laughs> eh, I've always felt like Maverick, Maverick was was well positioning these things for media coverage. He, he, you know, I, I acknowledge the good. You have to at this point acknowledge the good that this young brother has done because throughout his career, um, he has put his money where his mouth is and made sure that the cameras saw that he was doing it. So, you know, salute to him, man. No doubt. Listen, man, uh, also, what happened while you were on the grind is Tony Romo, uh, you know, he's the former Dallas quarterback. Now he's uh, an announcer or what have you, but he got to be a Dallas Maverick for a day. You know, Mark Cuban hooked him up and let him become a Dallas Maverick for a day. What's the point of this? You know, Tony has been getting that red carpet treatment in Dallas. I see a lot of people on social media that's like appalled. Like, why are they treating this man like uh, like he Troy Aikman or something? But um, you know, this was something cool. Mark Cuban, you know, I mean, he did Better everything like he was a maverick. Like he he went to shoot around early in the morning. He came to the game, got his uniform. As a matter of fact, number nine Tony Romo jersey sold out prior to the first quarter of the game against the Nuggets. Um, but as we all know, Mark Cuban always does. He tried to take this too far because he really wanted Romo to play. He tried to give him a contract and for the day, and Commissioner Silver put the kibosh on that. So he's like, you know, I like the idea, but you 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 going a little too uh, <laughs> you going a little too far. Because when Cuban went to him, he told him, you know, this is what I want to do. You can find me if you like. But Silver told Mark Cuban that the contract wouldn't be honored. So. It would have been, you know, it would have been a disaster had he tried to put him on the court. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we have a comment on Twitter uh, at KCMac38 says he's getting the treatment because Jerry Jones didn't do it. So I don't really get that. But. Yeah. I, I, I don't Jerry understand that homie. either. But I'm. What, <laughs> what is Jerry supposed I, I would to do? Like you don't own the Mavericks. And football no, season I, isn't in play. I mean, who, yeah, who knows what Jerry would do when, once football starts, but I guess, I don't know, maybe he felt like Jerry should I was about to say, done. there's going to be some crazy tributes once the season starts, but what is he supposed to do right now? He <laughs> doesn't have his, his show place. Like, that's not no. in effect yet. 
Yo, everybody gets tributes and everybody goes to the Hall of Fame these days, yo. It's ridiculous. That's just my opinion. Yeah, the opinion. argument has been on in the past couple of days about whether whether or not Tony Romo is a Hall of Famer, which brings up a lot of other people. A lot of people are bringing up Donovan McNabb's name, saying if Tony Romo is a Hall of Famer, then Donovan McNabb should walk into the Hall of Fame. I personally don't believe that wow. either one of them belong in the hallowed halls, but that's just my opinion. And y'all know me. I've been a big I, Tony I'm, Romo defender over the years. I guess it. I guess it all yeah, depends upon. I'm, statistically speaking, he's right there. But I mean, I don't know, man. They all. They both. Yeah. Well, we. I, all, we I mean, we always know, especially here, we bring more context to, to statistics. Um, you know, he, he definitely. It's. It, would I hear a lot of people? You know, they compare these guys to guys that are already in. And we've talked for years about how that's flawed because, first of all, the game changes. So because of Tony Romo and maybe Donovan McNabb have similar numbers to Jim Kelly and he's in the the Hall of Fame, that doesn't necessarily put them there. You know what I mean? They're in a more pass-happy, pass-friendly era. And and even with those guys being gone, it's getting even crazier as far as the pass is concerned. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the numbers, Um, right? I don't don't know. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Jim. McNabb has 92 wins, 49 losses, and a tie, although he didn't know you can tie in football. Um, McNabb has – and Tony Romo was about 78 and 49. McNabb got about 216 touchdowns. Romo about 248. Uh, McNabb has about 100 interceptions. Romo about 117. Yeah, um, that's crazy, though, because Romo has this narrative. It's not only just big, big, big moments, but people – he just has this narrative of throwing interceptions. But – McNabb is always praised for his ratio, but look at Tony's. He has more touchdowns yeah. and you know only seventeen more interceptions. But yeah, I'm just, um, I, I I'm know, just, I'm I just know, looking at the thing. It's funny because with, I know exactly where Deb right, is going to go with this. Within their statistics, it says what? Don, Donovan McNabb has nine playoff wins in eleven uh, in eleven years, and Tony Romo has two playoff wins in a thirteen year period. Uh, Donovan McNabb five NFC championship appearances. And obviously a Super Bowl appearance, and Tony Romo has donut on both of those. So I mean, when you bring no, in the team, he had a better team. No, I'm not making the argument. I'm not making the argument. No, I know. No, I know you're not. No, I know you're not. No, I know you're not. If I was a McNabb supporter, which, I mean, honestly, I'm just not. But if I was, I would make that argument, too. Right, right. By quoting those by quoting those stats, you're giving the 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 the, the McNabb supporters are going to kind of latch on to that, and I know Dev Dev, you've always been a defender. I'm gonna come right out and say it now that his career is done and he no longer plays for the enemy. I, I was like, I was closing in on fandom. Like I like Tony Romo's game. I like his attitude. I like everything about Tony Romo as a player. I, I just felt like, kind of like you, I, I, when we start talking about Hall of Fame, I feel like it should be that special level. So I wouldn't put him on the Hall of Fame level, but statistically and what he was able to do as a player, I think he is closer to the Hall than the other guy because the other guy statistically – was never really dominant. I mean, as you dig down in the, into those statistics, and not not the accumulated statistics necessarily, but the per game statistics, the per season statistics. Tony Romo played in a passing era, but Tony Romo wasn't a bad passer. In fact, he was a very good passer. I wouldn't put him in the hall. I think people that want him in the hall are overdoing it a little bit, but I don't think that should be justification to even have a conversation about the dude that threw up and then quit in the Super Bowl. Like, they're, they're, I, I feel as though they're on two different levels. I don't um, know about that. Like, the Mavericks thing. I mean. Salute to, salute to, to the Mavericks. They looking him out. Uh, he's better than Troy Aikman. I know I'm going to get slander from Cowboys fans for that. But I think they're. Who cares? He and McNabb are like close to the same level, if not on the same level. Um I would say that Tony Romo was a better passer than McNabb. And, of course, you know, McNabb had more team success. But when it's all said and done, I think their levels are, are pretty equal, even though McNabb 
feel the need to take shots at, at Romo, you know, often. But hey, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think so. I, I, that, I personally that like, again, I'm not a big McGann fan, but I'm not a Romo fan either. You know? I think they're pretty much at the same level. Um, I don't think one is really better than the other. Um, mm-hmm. But at the same time, I don't think either one of them belong anywhere near the hall other than to visit. So, and Tony Romo is is number four all time in quarterback rating, behind Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady. <laughs> um, after him is Steve Young, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, Philip Rivers, Ben Roethlisberger, Kurt Warner, whatever. Well, once, you said, once you said thirty second, once, once you said once you said Russell Wilson is like third Messed overall all time, it don't need that stat. You can just throw that right out the window. Like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, listen, man, speaking of the Dallas Cowboys, who uh, seem to stay in the news, even when there's not a season going on, Des Bryant comes out and says that black people are holding themselves back. Um, you know, we often see this in the, in the media with athletes where you have some that, uh, you know, want to fight the system and others think that instead of fighting the system, we need to fight ourselves. Um <laughs> You know, no one some people ever don't. Says, some people don't acknowledge the system. Yeah, so that's the thing. Some people don't acknowledge the system. So I guess the answer really lies somewhere in the middle. But the fact of the matter is, it's either, it's either one extreme or the other. But uh, what do you guys think about Dez? B, I, I don't like. I mean, for me, like I like I just said, it's 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 just one of those in, instances where somebody sees their own success, even though he started out you know, in a, in a, in a difficult place, you know, but was a gifted athlete, made it out, has become a millionaire and you seem to overlook and maybe forget if you've ever known about what happens in America and how the playing field is never equal. Like it's easy for you at this point to come out and, and tell everybody, you know, we got to look at ourselves and this and that, but there's a lot of people out there who are doing the best that they can for themselves. Yeah, I mean, you got some black people with two degrees and, and, and they get positions that are lesser than their white counterpart who barely have one. So, I mean, that's the, the reality that we live in. So shout out to this. I'm not saying that Des can't acknowledge both sides of this because everybody no matter what's going on you have to want to do better you have to want to make better for yourself but he can't sit here and act like there isn't a built-in excuse for you know how things go in america as far as race relations are concerned um with all due respect to your to your great talent and ability mr des bryant I would like to extend a great and honest, genuine F you uh, from all of us black folks out here who are striving very, very, very diligently to make it in a place that was designed for us to fail. And because I know you were the type of athlete that didn't really go to class and probably had a quote-unquote tutor to uh, do your work, I'm, I'm quite – I understand that you didn't study. I understand that you don't un- know history or the social context that surrounds American history. So from an educational standpoint, let's just say that your privilege, which is extended to you by white privilege, why? Because white people give you the opportunity to play football and entertain them. Um, and I know people may take offense to that, but I would like for you to show me where the ownership in professional sports is balanced and weighted towards the players that are on the field and where they come from. Exactly. There aren't many, many black owners in professional sports and none in football. So white privilege extends you the opportunity to have athletes privilege. And yes, that does exist. And as Dev mentioned, you've made it out because of gifts that God has given you and you're able to play a child's game and make a great wage doing so, but you have lost touch with the common man and the common black man. And I'd like to point also, I'd like to point out that the thing that saddens me and hurts me the most about white supremacy 
in America is not what white people do directly to black people. It's that we buy in to the belief that at some level we deserve the treatment that we receive, that we are inferior, that we are what they say we are. And this, to me, is an example of that. So salute to you and F you, Des. It's my thoughts. Yo, man. Right. <laughs> Listen, man. Um, I just think Des needs to be educated. I don't think uh, he's been educated. He's lived in this bubble as being an uh, all-world athlete. So he lacks the proper education. He's probably been treated a certain way his entire life because of his privilege as a great athlete. Um, being a great athlete at Santa Ozzy comes with its own comes with its own privilege um, in the system of white supremacy. So he's been living in this bubble, been treated a certain way. I mean, he's been he's been given so many opportunities, even even within the league, right? So he messes up and he gets a shadow and all. Like he's he's literally privileged. So he doesn't get like B. Austin said. He doesn't get it. He he needs to be educated. So. I hope someone sits him down. I hope he has an elder, an uncle, someone who can educate this young man. Uh, you know, so I mean, but if not, man, you know, he can go straight to hell. I, I I appreciate I appreciate that perspective, Jimmy, but I'm I'm not inclined to let him off the hook as easily. No, I'm not letting him off the hook. 2017. Yeah, in 2017, with all that we have to see and the way news media is coverage covered, for him to come out and say that. He's will, he's willfully uninformed, not unintentionally uninformed. You choose to to overlook things and take the position. Yeah, but even even within our that, media that now, have. right? The way we consume media, some of us live in a bubble. In terms of that, we don't get we we watch media that's slanted whatever way we are essentially. So, um, I get your point. You know, it's no excuse for it. There's no excuse for behavior. He's grown and feel better, but at the same time. And hearing what he said, he just to me came off as uneducated and about the nuances of a, of what white supremacy is and and how systematically we've been oppressed. You know what I mean? He came off as just being completely uneducated. Uh, so for me, that that that's what I just hope someone like you know grips him up and teaches him so he gets to know better. You know what I mean? Like for instance, everyone you know praises Colin Kaepernick as they should, but he wasn't always educated either. He was a different person. Someone gripped him to the side and schooled him on what's what, and we saw a whole so new person. Somebody showed him the loaf. Yeah, somebody showed him the loaf. So my point in saying that is all hope isn't lost, uh, but, you know, clearly there, there, he's lacking some sort of education in terms of what's going on. And that whole concept of him being the star athlete and being in a bubble is a real thing. It's a real thing. He, you know, it's a real thing until it isn't. As of right now, He's probably, if not in his peak, on his way to his peak. So, so there'll be a time when he has to live like the rest of us. Have to go back to his miserable life. That's what you mean? Yeah, <laughs> shout to Raymond. To go back to your miserable lives. What about black on black crime? Where the white women at? All white people ain't bad. We is our own worst enemy. What about black on black? That sounds just like his quote. (laughs) Yo, man, it is what it is, man. Yo, so my thing is, like we also said, you know, FOH to you if you don't get it together. But listen, man. Last thing that happened while you were on the ground, I want to get you guys to talk a little bit about this, is uh, one Steph Curry, the light-skinned brother, you know what I'm saying? Um, he's getting a lot of disdain from other star athletes who just don't seem to like the guy for his popularity. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I don't, maybe it's, you know, because he's a light-skinned guy and he blems for real, but who knows? Fact of the matter is they just don't mess with him. Well, I, I mean, I, I know for a fact that it has a lot to do with how fast in the past two seasons he's a, he's ascended up that ladder. I mean, last year, for God's sake, he basically snatched the league right from under LeBron James. Um, I think LeBron got a lot of his respect back after they came back from that 3-1 deficit in the NBA Finals. But Steph was that dude. You know what I'm saying? And 
I think everybody pretty much, well, everybody with a brain pretty much knew that LeBron was still the best player in the NBA. But I know you guys remember last season in route to a unanimous MVP, a lot of people were questioning that. And there was a lot of people out there saying that Steph Curry was the best player in the league. Um, I think a lot of it also stems from the fact, you know how, like, we have this thing where, you know what I'm saying, if you grew up in a house with two parents and had a good upbringing and all that, you're not a real one. So, you know what I'm saying, he has that background. A lot of these other guys have these struggle stories that got them where they are today. It's very superficial, very shallow, but I believe it it plays a very big part in it. Great, but, you know, we, we saw the relationship the great between Brian and the contentious uh, in the finals a few times. The great, Deb, the great philosopher, my son, on a show that I can't mention, kind of talked about exactly what you're talking about in terms of the public's perception of what is real and what is, you know, what's thorough and what's a real one of those and kind of talked about that. You, We know that yeah, LeBron remains... Kid. The best. <laughs> you saw my, but but it's the same. It's, it's kind of the same principle. It's the mm-hmm. same principle. We we know LeBron is the best thing walking in the NBA. I mean, period, that's point that. blank, with no footwork, with no go to, with no go to move. That's <laughs> fact. Fact though. Fact though. <laughs> um, but that's the thing that. is, with the thing is, the thing is, with um, shout out to the original Bozo Troy F. Um, the thing is, with, with Steph, even though you also know that he's a, a superb athlete, he's a lot more relatable to the regular Joe watching NBA TV or NBA basketball than LeBron is. None of us have an opportunity to be Steph, but we have even less of an opportunity to be 6'9", 270, and run a four three forty and be able to jump over built. Like, what LeBron does is is a sight to see, but we can't even go out in the backyard and it's imitate. It's all about LeBron. Like, Steph, 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 you can go out and you can, and you can pretend to do what he does. It ain't going to work for you, but you can pretend. You can take <laughs> You're gonna miss a lot from very far away. You will miss a lot, but you can do it. You can't even pretend to do what a lot of NBA stars. I can't pretend to do what 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 Wiggins does. I can't pretend to do what Russell Westbrook does. I, you can't fake that athleticism. Steph's game is based on, for the most part, skill, and I think that's a little bit more relatable to the average human being than what a lot of NBA stars. So that has a lot to do with it. He's a good, you know, quote unquote, good Christian husband. Comes from two parent home, created a two parent home, has right. Everything is is good and cookie cutter about this dude. And as near as I can tell, it's genuine. It is real. But he was the next best thing, and America has run with it. I still look at him as the underdog. So I'm a fan. I've been a Steph fan since Davidson. I like to see him take ignorant, disrespectful, wrong shots, and they go in consistently. I love it. (laughs) But I I I understand where the public is coming from and and why his NBA stars resent it because he doesn't have the gifts that they have, but he gets more adulation. So I get it. And um, I don't think we mentioned where all of this came from. uh, Somebody – uh, Marcus Thompson of the Bay Area News Group, he's the author of Steph's new book called, well, it's a book about Steph called Golden, The Miraculous Rise of Steph Curry. So, you know, I think in the conversations that he's had with Steph for these, for this book, you know, they've come across this type of thing. And some of the players that he named specifically was LeBron James, uh, Russell Westbrook, Chris Paul, he said Chris Ball, Paul and some of the other Clippers. But you can kind of, if if you take all of those all of those names, you can kind of, it's easy to see why these would be the particular players that somebody would name. Chris Paul has kind of been the undisputed best point guard in the league for a while now. Jimmy always jokes about how State Farm might have subconsciously played him out, and since he cashed a check, he didn't even notice that they had him in the in the 
um, commercial with him going down the escalator, crossing Steph, who's going up the escalator. That's symbolism right there. And I think somebody probably pulled Chris Paul's coattails to that, or either he listened to the war room and heard Jimmy clowning him about it. And he may have finally realized the symbolism of that particular ad. LeBron James put in work for the past decade or so to be considered the undisputed, you know, greatest player in the game. Because for a long time, you know, a lot of people wanted to give that to him before he deserved it, but there was a lot of pushback out there. And, you know, he had to kind of keep doing what he did to earn it. Then you have uh, Chris Paul's teammates. Like, the Clippers, you know, they've been Golden State's whipping boys for the last three seasons. So I can kind of see where they would get this name from because they were supposed to be that team that was next. And then Golden State and Steph Curry kind of leapfrogged them, you know, smacked them up in the playoffs a couple times and and left them being next after next, which is not going to work because they're getting old and all that kind of stuff. And I think it's the same for Russell Westbrook with Chris Paul being the undisputed top point guard in the league for the past several years before Steph jumped, really jumped onto the scene. I think that he envisioned himself being next and then – <laughs> but but here's so, my thing, right? Back to back MVPs, like it's easy bit, to get jealous over that kind of stuff. But here's the thing: to add a little bit more context into it, like, and and I read the article. I actually listened to it. He he mentioned this on the podcast. And when you listen to it, he's not saying that any of these guys directly told him this. He's like reading into right. body language and things that they may have said to somebody that told somebody else. So exactly. to me, it it, it kind of came off like my man just put a book out and he got a book to sell. So this is the headlines to get his book out there because I ain't going to front. I almost bit. When I read this, I'm all about hearing people spill tea and, and, and spit bars at each other. So, um, so, but when I actually like really paid attention to what was going on, it's like, yo, you don't know LeBron feels that way. You're making that up. And because he also kind of plays Steph out, talking about how Steph feels sad about that. He wants everybody to, around the league to like him and respect him. Accept him. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he I, I don't play him up like, it could possibly be a reach. But just looking at things myself, like I don't see these guys, especially in today's NBA where everybody's kumbaya and everybody rides banana boats together. I don't see them getting into stuff like I've seen with, like I've never seen LeBron really that serious with somebody as he got in the NBA Finals. But then again, it was the NBA Finals. This is do or die. You know what I'm saying? This is for all the marbles. So if he has a couple of contentious moments with Steph, they bump each other a couple of times. It's just you, you're not really used to seeing LeBron be that aggressive and kind of be but that you know what, bully though? when he I could be. And then I, I he embarrasses Chris Paul off the dribble so much. He can't like it. He can't. Yeah, I, yeah I'm about to yo. say. He, 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 yo, <laughs> he can't like it. Like, I, I know Chris Paul. Yo, if yo, he, 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 comes into the, he comes into the Clippers arena and he does work on Clip Paul's hairline and ankle. But, it, so but is, yo, that's but is just he not supposed like, to go at like Chris like that? Head. If Chris is that dude? My thing is this, though. If Chris, no, Paul, does, if Chris Paul yeah. does like him, I have a problem with that. And the fact <laughs> of the matter is, this is what happens when you ascend that way. Like, you, like – when LeBron was on to come up, yo, they hated him. The Celtics and them all them dudes, they hated him because mm-hmm. even though they were beating him, he still got the spotlight, and they hated him for that reason. So, exactly. like, listen, man, heavy is the yo, head that wears the they crown. Hate you start Ray Allen because he went and played with him. I mean, listen, I, man, I, I think it's a corny move for Ray Allen, but yo, they would, I would hate Ray. that man again I in hate Ray too. No, but yeah, no, no, no doubt, doubt, yeah, no doubt uh, B, but it's still womanly not to speak to a dude. Listen, like man, Kevin Garnett like, will be on national TV and go out of his way not to speak to the dude. Like, when you are, uh, when you put yourself amongst the greats and you start doing, I shouldn't even say amongst the greats, when you start doing great things and you start ascending, that's going to bring a lot with it, man. It's, it's in, the, in the words of Christopher Wallace, man, more money, more problems, man. And, you know, not specifically money, but when you start getting the accolades and you start getting the commercials and, you know what I'm saying, you making a company stock jump up a gazillion percent. When when you're you you're starting to become the face of the league, when you're doing dudes, LeBron type stuff. Essentially, other dudes should be mad at you. They shouldn't like you. Hmm. That lets me know there's a little bit there's a little bit of a machismo left in the league. Yo, not much, not much, but they shouldn't like you. Not a lot. Can can I can I point can this I point something out? And it is a read. It is a stuff. read in. This is jealousy over stuff it is a that read. ain't even basketball related. 
Yeah, that's woman. That's actually womanly, Jimmy. Compete, that ain't competed that too. Can that's I, amazing. Can I, they try and get this bread. Can, go ahead, go ahead, B. Yo, can I point out? And and, and this is a read in too. But as far as the as far as the Cavs rivalry with the Dubs, I've seen LeBron have contentious moments with Steph. But why you ain't have no contentious moments with Big Weldon? Big Weldon the one going around you taking people with me. <laughs> <laughs> he the dude trying to take you take your baby maker out, but you ain't had no problems with him. You got problems with a little a little light skin boy. Come on, because man. Because Welvin, like Welvin ain't take his spotlight, and and Welv, you know, he might not be able to beat Welv. So you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but you know what? You know what else, though, guys? Like LeBron has his crew. You know what I'm saying? He has his crew in the league, and it could be one of those things where, if this was somebody from the Banana Boat Boys who ascended like this, you know, he might not have had a problem with that. Not at all. Maybe, maybe if this is Ben Simmons, <laughs> next get down and lay down, man. LeBron Listen, might man. not have a problem with that, but Yo. since LeBron has no control over what's going on, we got a problem here. Yo, LeBron got the hoops version of the mafia, man. Like, yo, let Stephen Curry and get his finger pricked so so they don't bang with him like that, man. It is what it is, man. Get down and lay down, man. Listen, man, it's cool though, cause cause all he did was send send one of his homie uh, Kevin Durant came and took his shine anyway. So, you know what I'm saying? Steph not even mentioned for MVP no more. That and that's another funny thing though that came up when I was uh, reading about this particular story about. Kevin Durant was one of those guys. You know what I'm saying? Now he plays with the dude. Remember, yo, you know, the more, they, yo, the more had, they all had some come moments out. during the KC. The more stories that come remember out about when KD, asked him about Steph's defense, and he and Russ laughed at the ball on national TV about his defense. Yeah. <laughs> yo, it's funny, though, because, like, the more stories I hear about KD, and I was one of the guys that was like, look, do what you want to do, man. It's free agent. Go play what you want to play. I don't care. But the yeah, more yeah. stories that come out, man. The more stories that come out make him seem oh, more and more like a sucker, man. Every time I hear a story, <laughs> yo, it's KD, like, yo. KD, KD, oh, breaks, KD breaks my heart, man. KD I'm telling you, when they were up in that like series and they had control, character. they asking KD and them, what about Steph? You know, he's the man in the league. What about his defense? They looking at each other laughing. Ha, like, you know what I mean? And who you run to play with? Defense must not be that bad. All right. <laughs> That's what's up, man. So, uh, Let's get into some quick birthday shout outs and then we can move on to some hot topics. Birthdays, of course, are brought to you by Digital Extreme Technologies. Do you or your business need a custom website solution? Well, for dynamic, professional, and most of all, affordable custom website solutions, you need Digital Extreme Technologies. No need to break the bank for an effective online presence. Top quality results driven websites that are incredibly affordable prices. And yes, people. Financing options are available. So if you, even though you're going to get a nice hookup, if you don't have everything right there, you can put something down. You can get your finance on, and you can be all good. So visit DigitalExtremeTech.com or call 267-205-4203. And for discounted rates, be sure to tell them that the boys over at War Room Sports sent ya. All right, birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, Yay! Hunter Pence. Man, I, I I was excited for a little while, Jim, when Hunter Pence became a Philly because that was right on the trail end of the Phillies' dominance. Like during the season, they still were, but they could no longer, you know, get through those playoffs. Um, but Hunter Pence, playoffs. thirty-four. I <laughs> know. Yo, shout out to the homie Q. I haven't heard his name in a, in a minute. Quentin Richardson, um, former. NBA fame, most notably for the Los Angeles Clippers, um, was engaged to the singer Brandy for a little while. Q turns 37 years old. Uh, another one of my favorites from that era, Baron Davis, turns 38. We talked about Baron earlier this season. He was sure. playing in the D League, trying to get another shot at this thing of ours here. Uh, Bo Outlaw, shout out to him yes, on his 46th birthday. Uh, Dana Barrows. Top five Philly point guard of all time. I'm, I'm thinking, like, yo, that might be true, and that might be sad. Dana oh, Barrows turns fifty. Dana Barrows had a nice like two year run where he was the man. Yo, he put Little up dude. fifty in a 
Dana Barris used to give Dana Barris used to give fifties. Yeah, I saw I saw a game or two where he gave somebody fifty. Yeah, I, that's funny because when Dana Barris was there, that was the the period where I went to every Sixers game. So, like you know, he might not be that good in the in the larger scheme of things in the history of the game, but Dana, you always got a spot here. He was my homie when I didn't know no better. Um, <laughs> Mark Leiter, <laughs> uh, great pitcher, turns 54. So we like to give a War Room Sports salute to all of these folks on their birthdays. Salute. Happy birthday. It's my birthday. Yay. We're hollering. Real quick, before we get into these hot topics and get to this phone line, you guys can check out the website, warroomsports.com. Uh, done, of course, by Digital Extreme Technologies that we just spoke of. While you're there, be sure to take your time, look around, click on the Contact Us tab if you want to send a message about the company, the show, the network, sponsorship and advertising, all kinds of stuff. For general inquiries, make sure you email us, info at warroomsports.com. While you're browsing the site, click that memorabilia tab, buy War Room Sports merchandise, click the blog tab to read our latest articles. Then you can click the respective icons and tabs to follow all of our social media platforms to subscribe to our iTunes podcast, to watch our webcast at War Room Sports TV, or to listen to the WRS Podcast Network. You can also do all of this by downloading our free War Room Sports mobile app to get everything I just mentioned on the go. You can do that in your respective uh, markets, app stores, whatever they call them these days, or you can actually do this from the website as well, as long as you go from your phone and you click on that, uh, you can download it right from your phone. Uh, join the JW Philly Realty chat room right now during the, the show at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room to enter the chat room. Just sign up for a free profile on Blog Talk Radio. If you don't want to create an account, you can sign into your Facebook and Twitter accounts. And while you're at it, make sure you click follow. That'll get you updates and reminders about the show. We'll be taking questions and reading posts from Facebook, Twitter, and the chat room during the show. But if you want to call in and speak with us, the Digital Extreme Technologies hotline is now open. That number is 323 323- Four one zero 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 one two. Press one when prompted. If you happen to be listening from your phone already, just press one if you want to talk. And I see we got a couple calls on the line, so we're gonna get into this hot topic segment. But we're gonna, you know, before we actually talk about any of the stories, we will go to the phone lines. But before we do that, Jimmy has to let you guys know who hot topics are brought to you by. Absolutely, without a doubt. If your schedule is too hectic to read as much as you want audio books and kick back and let someone else do the reading for you. How do you do that? AudibleTrial.com slash War Room Sports. That's AudibleTrial.com slash War Room Sports. There's a lot of amazing books on Audible, um, a lot of amazing sports books. So make sure you check it out. Get a free book on us. Go read about the history of this thing. Read about Bill Russell. Read about Wilt Chamberlain. Read about Julia Serving. The game did not start with Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Read about how he's a sellout that never helped anybody. With that being said, go to audibletrial.com slash warroomsports and uh, shout out to Audible for their support of the war room. <laughs> no doubt. Um, let's go to the phone lines before we get into these hot topics. Uh, we got the homie Phil Matic from the Tissue and the Tape Hip Hop Show and on the couch with the Wilsons. Bill, what's going on, good brother? Welcome to the war room. You're good, fellas. Good. Hey, Phil, Phil. Phil, before you jump into it, man, what you listen to on Audible these days, beloved? Oh, man, I'm listening to uh, the, the Big Payback by uh, Jeff Chang. In fact, I just finished it for, the, for the, like, the third time because I, I always got to keep my knowledge oh, yeah, up. You know yeah. what I mean? So I, so I can spit these yeah. bars with, with authority. When, when I, 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 de- I definitely, you, you know what I mean? I definitely peeped that. I definitely, it's one of the best hip-hop books on there. I definitely peeped that book. Absolutely. That's a pretty good book. Yeah, pretty good book. How you fellas doing, man? Good to get Get to get the full three man weave back in effect. You know what I mean, you already know. Oh man, be all back from saving babies and battle. delivering water. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, I real quick, I ain't gonna hold you. I just wanted to, a couple things, yo. The the board does. I I have to say this very carefully, so so it doesn't get misconstrued. What he said was a hundred percent true because he was talking about himself. The, the the black problem the, the 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 problem for ourselves is people like Dez that perpetuate white supremacy by saying the things that he said, which gives them the justification to continue doing what they're doing. Not like they need it anyway, but 
And then Bars. it makes people like, oh, well, it ain't really that bad, you know, because Jeff what you did cool and he wears star and, you know what I mean? You know, so it's Yo, people like him. I thought, I thought Phil said problem. Jeff. He said Jeff. I thought he was dissing me by praising me. I thought, yeah, I thought he said Jeff. I was about to say, yeah, Jeff, 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 not, 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 not the big homie, man. Not, definitely not. Just, I'm talking about Dez Bryant. Uh, just praise, from the Dallas he just praise this the hell out of this. <laughs> Yo, he he, 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 he first on. of all, he, first of all, he's 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 he showed his ignorance, and then also he showed the fact that he doesn't get it because he was in fact his own problem. He he didn't he doesn't have the the traditional problems that most black people have with you know systemic racism and white supremacy. He got in his own way. So he must assume that every other black person must get in their own way because he did. He's but he's a horrible Phil, and so to your point, right? We always talk about like not just white supremacy. We talk about white privilege, right? And a lot of people don't recognize Absolutely. white privilege, right? But there's also like being a superior athlete has his privilege. He probably doesn't even recognize his privilege. All the trouble Absolutely. he's gotten into and gotten out of, he doesn't realize that he has Absolutely. privilege. You probably think it's like that for everybody. Right. Because he catches 15 TD passes a year, and like I said in the, in the um in the War Room Sports Game Time chat, you know y'all can join. You know, they'll tell you how. Um, he will see the full weight of white supremacy when he can't catch touchdowns anymore. When he is not the X factor anymore, which is coming soon, judging by last year. Um, so it it is what it is for that boy. And as and as far as Steph. Man, you know it, it is what it is, man. When you when you start to become that dude, whether it's justified or not, the the hate is going to come. And you know, just like it was, you, y'all guys mentioned how it was for LeBron and how the Celtics they they hated him because he was getting all the praise and he was the heir apparent, you know, and he hadn't even been in the league but so long. It's it's a couple things with Steph. People see. A, a light skin was perceived as a privileged kid because his pop played in the NBA, you know, and they see like they feel like it, the the perception is everything was handed to him. When anybody that's watched the game, like you guys have and I have, know that you know nobody nobody said or believed that Steph was going to be who he is right now. Right. And if he they did, you know, I mean, only his pop <laughs> probably thought that, and he probably was like, yeah. He he won't be as good as me. I mean, if he, if he kept it real, I mean, but so and you know he worked to get to this point. You know, is it, it, he makes it look easy on the court, but you know anybody that's ever stepped on a basketball court at any level knows what he does is not easy at all. You know, but he's he's gained so much adulation and became the face of the NBA NBA because his his. You know, larger his personality is one of, you know, familiarity. He has, like you mentioned, he, it's the the family aspect, the religion, right. all of that stuff that plays so the well in, in Middle America. Yeah, he 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 feels what? like you know you can have a drink with him. You know what I mean, or or you know yeah. drink milk with him if you in, will. In, 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 every, so, in every in every way, in every way, alcohol, they have anointed no. they've anointed him. They've anointed him as the everyday man. Whether yeah. that's true, and, and, we know that's fallacy, but he's the everyman but you know in the what? NBA. Yeah, and and, and to quote the great philosopher Benny Siegel, he know, I didn't even taste this dream. I feel sorry for those who did because those dudes, they <laughs> want that adulation that he's, that he's been handed. Listen, like, I mean, I'm sure he's not shying away from it, but he didn't chase it. At least it, that's the way I, I view it. it, it it's kind of weird, right? Because when you think about it, Kobe had this kind of perception of him being a privileged kid, but Kobe was so mm-hmm. like so much a demon on the court that even the dudes that grew up like you know quote unquote uh, street respected him because when it came to basketball, was the ball savage. was a savage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like like this ball like you know and it, it's it's funny though because you see the same thing with Westbrook. People can't relate to Westbrook because he's such a killer. Like you know, old he's weird though. Buckets. Yeah, but but he's at the weird. same time. At the same time, like, this dude is, like, for all intents and purposes, is a nice guy. He comes off as a nice guy. 
he doesn't seem to have that killer. Although I think he may have a little bit of that killer. Oh in no, him. he definitely has a killer. You can but, see it when but, he, but he but it gets away with a lot. The same way. Like, like you know, and uh, throwing his little shots at people. But it doesn't come you know, across the same way. I think they, they feel some type of way about that too. And and here's the thing though, I think that Draymond does a lot for him even off the court. Like Draymond takes the heat. Like he's the bad guy, so he like takes he all the like it, that negative energy. Like he takes all that he's negative energy. He's Rick Mahorn, yo. Exactly. So he takes all the negative energy. Like Isaiah was a little savage too, but Rick Mahorn and him took that little energy <laughs> until years la- years later when everybody recognized that yo Isaiah was the catalyst behind all this evilness. Yeah, man. Like, but he had Lambeer and and Mahorn. You know, getting grimy for him, and he just be smiling. Meanwhile, he uh, kicking you in your back. I mean, that, that's that's how he that's just how he rolled. And I think Steph has a little bit of that in him. But the last thing I'll say, y- y'all mentioned how how dudes is all the, the banana bull boys and all that, man. Like like that. Like another great philosopher, Kendrick Lamar said, "New agons is new agons. Don't get involved, man. Young bulls is weird. They they they." They want to be friends, but then they get jealous of each other. It's, it's like it's like uh, loving hip hop in, in the NBA <laughs> right now, yo. That's all they want, bro. Yo, shout out to you, Phil. They be jealous of each other's die job. <laughs> yo, oh, yo Phil. Phil King Kendrick comes out in five hours, man. You ready? Yo. Oh, I I I, I was ready on the seventh when he first told me it was coming out. I mean, that's what I'm about to say. Like yo, I checked for it a couple of weeks ago. Like what the that, hell? That's, that's how that's how I know he a real one, yo. Because he on he on CP time. Yo. Like he he was like, but, yo, yo. But let, me ask, right. let me ask you, let me ask you a question. <laughs> he was like, oh, I forgot <laughs> something. I'll be right back. Let me ask you, how much do you think he paid for that new album cover though? That joint was definitely done in Microsoft Word. Oh, <laughs> yo, <laughs> man, he put all the he put he, he put all the money into his video budget, yo. That, yo, that's and, all that money, and that joint wasn't even like, yo, that picture like it was sitting on the iPhone 4. Yo, I, I could have did that with, with my with my little setup, but yeah, you know I mean, Kendrick, get at me. You know what I mean, I, I got, I won't even charge you what they charged you. But Jim, um, that was a disposable camera picture. <laughs> yo, that joint was tricky <laughs> ass. Yo. He, he threw that away after he, he had, got that. He had one of them. He had one Last of them time y'all got filmed the cameras design. with the with the flash on it that you got to connect to it. You know what I mean, one of the long yeah, cameras, because. Yeah, right, um, everybody yeah. knows that, like all, all of us millimeters. are huge. Yo, all of us are like huge Nas fans, right? So, but it's funny because like Nas was in this space kind of where Kendrick is, where you recognize the fact that whether you like, uh, you know, Alien Voice Kenny or not, you recognize that he puts thoughts into things and that he's a thinker. So when you see something like as trash as his album cover, you start trying to like read too much into it. What's he trying to say here? It uh-huh. must mean something. That's what we used to do with Nas. When Nas make a trash song, we somehow try to figure out what he's really trying to say to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did a lot of figuring during Nas' Yo, I get it. Like, <laughs> I was on Nas' like y'all made up. Like, okay, I see what you're talking about because you know the Moors back in those days, they like <laughs> you just been making stuff up. Like you, know, you start get, you start getting your Michael Eric Dyson on, man. Uh-huh. Oh man. <laughs> Anyway, man, <laughs> salute to you, Phil, man. I know, I know. Once the album drops, you guys have something to say about it in your next episode, man. Which you know comes oh, from War Sports Podcast man. Network. And um, so we'll be on the lookout yeah, for that, check man. Check us out on the on the War Room. Uh, you can check us out on iTunes, do all that, and then you know also check for On the Couch with the Wilson. Um, we got we got some good stuff coming up with Netflix. So, uh, more more about that as it as it unfolds. No, did you? But did y'all watch Thirteen Reasons Why yet? Um, no, yeah. it's it's on the list, yo. In fact. The last thing I'll say, uh, hit us up. Anybody that that got something that they think we should watch, or they got questions they want us to ask, answer, hit us up at we are the Wilsons TV at gmail dot com. I just gave and, you a you show, know, yo. I need I need y'all to watch that show, yo. Thirteen yo, reasons I, I it's on the to, list, yo. I need my kids to get older so I can leave them alone and I can get back into <laughs> my TV grind. Like I still grind. No but I want to, you know, I want to grind <laughs> enough where I can be a, uh, you know, once in a while guest on on the couch. So that's, how I, that's how I used to go. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, man. We 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 can we can definitely make that happen, yo. We we get uh, yo. I I got. We'll talk off air, but I got I got an idea that I think would be dope. Um, right. but yo, Dev, yo, Dev got kids, yo. Do. And then the three year anniversary is coming up. Next next week for uh, the tissue, 
And then we got we dropping uh, Respect Heat Holders Volume Five. Trust the process. That'll be out on Monday. Yes, sir. Y'all, y'all definitely get y'all definitely get that new uh, mixtape fire from the boy Rick G and the Heat Holders. No so doubt. Until then, thank you, gentlemen, and All right. uh, get back to those bars. All right. All right. All right. All right. So. Actually, this is that's kind of crazy that Phil just hung up. We probably should have cut him more for a second. Um, his his school, his, his basketball team, uh, North Carolina. Actually, North Carolina legislators threatened. They're threatening. They they filed a bill or something to take the University of North Carolina and North Carolina State out of the ACC if the conference boycotts the state again because we know a lot of things um, were taken out of North Carolina this past season college uh, professional like the NBA all-star game was supposed to be there because of this whole uh, transgender bathroom situation uh, what is it the, the H2 bill what's it called either way uh, I, call it, I call it H to the Izzo <laughs> either way um so I call it the, the all ACC home middle, the all home middle that, bill. You know, that jumped on the whole thing and and boycotted the state because they took away, you know, the, the championship games from the ACC. They took that away from North Carolina. Um and the, the schools frankly are pissed and they're threatening to leave the ACC if this goes on. Now, how important do you think this is to the ACC to lose an all time program? defending national championship, uh, North Carolina. Like, do y'all think they're going to take that seriously or is their moral compass, whether that's fake or not, you know, they might just be going along with the, with the flow. So they don't get flat, but, um, how serious do you think they're going to take this threat? I, I think, I think they're pump faking. Um, I don't think, I think there's too much money on the table for, for all involved. I don't think they really care about the wolf pack. You know, NC State, they could take or leave. Um, but UNC, nah. Mm-mm. That can't go down. I, don't, I mean, that's I, I, definitely on different levels, but I don't even think they're just take or leave NC State. Me um, either. Yeah, I mean, because that's, that's nice. those three North Carolina schools are basically like the heart of the ACC as far as your dollars are concerned. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it 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 was House that, Bill 728, which was filed on mm-hmm. Tuesday, which states that any public state school in a conference that boycotts North Carolina will be barred from extending any grant of media rights to the conference and shall immediately provide written notice to the conference that the con- the constituent institution intends to withdraw from the conference no later than when the assignment of its media rights expire, unless the conference immediately ends the boycott. So the state of North Carolina is is hitting back, and ACC is the first entity in its crosshairs. Interesting. Yo, man, Interesting. North Carolina. Let me, let me add. Let me this. add this because I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little confused. Um, the the colleges were on the side of the bathroom law or against the bathroom law. Um, I don't even think the colleges and what position they took as a university even matters because they're state schools. So it's actually the right. state, you know, because this is the state that everybody has been boycott, boycotting. The state is basically just telling the ACC, if you continue to participate in this boycott, we're going to take, you know, these North Carolina state schools out of there. State I don't think they can do that with Duke. Exactly. I believe Duke is a private school. Um, yeah, Duke is so they can't right. threaten. They can't threaten Duke, but North Carolina State and the University of North Carolina, you know, the state controls whether or not they remain in the ACC or not. So I don't think it even matters what anybody from the school would tell you. If the state of North Carolina says we bouncing out of the ACC and they're not bluffing, then they're bouncing out of the ACC. Which is crazy because like that's that's probably one of the reasons why Coach Kujijewski, aka Shashevsky, um, <laughs> came out. <laughs> And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. said what he said. He spit his bars about it because he probably had no fear in the world. I mean, but also probably had no fear in the no. world because he's, he's Mike Kujijewski, meaning that even if he <laughs> were to get reprimanded, he'd have a job tomorrow. So 
you know, um, you know that, that must be an amazing feeling when you know that no matter what you do, someone was willing to throw you a million dollar check. Anyway, they don't, even, um, they don't even need a job at this point. I mean, he probably doesn't, but the fact Who remains, like, know, if, like, go ahead, say something to me yo, if you want. Yo, I'll Kuchy, leave, and my presence will be missed in the game of basketball. Pete, this though, if Kuzi said does anything he, out does, of pocket, does. Does Kuski Wooski have the same level of like a Bobby Bowden or a, a, got, a, a in, my Jake opinion, in my opinion, I think he's number one. Yeah, I think he's number one. Paul, number one. Yeah, I think he's number one in college Listen, athletics. Let's let keep yeah, it a he's number one. Period. No, no <laughs> shot, no shots. But Joe yeah. Pa's last last twenty years, he was living off of the fact of the young Joe Pa. Like, let's keep it a buck. Coach K is still out here competing for chips. Didn't he win a chip last year? Uh, who won last uh, year? No, they didn't win last no, year. No, but he's but won, won one recently. He's yeah, won one recently. Recent enough. Yeah, my thing Recent is so, enough. So, so Coach K still out here putting numbers on the board, and because he's Kujajewski, like, yo, <laughs> he, yo, he has NBA, he has NBA teams that salivate over him on an annual basis. Like, he probably has like the most job security of anyone in the country. Yeah, at the drop yeah, of a hat, sure <laughs> yo, at the drop yeah, of a hat, he can do that. You were right. It was two years ago, though. 2015, they won. 2010. Yeah, it was recent. I know. I know it was recent. Yeah, right before. Right before. Um, <laughs> called that man, Illinois. Coach Kuzmi Wuchki. <laughs> Yo, I don't know. I don't know if y'all remember that. I actually got that from an old SBA coach off the plane, and dude was trying to say his name with the piece of paper. <laughs> And the ball kept saying Kujawuski, and he was looking like yo, waiting for, waiting for his ride. Kujawuski, yo, that, it is spe- yo, the way they spell his name, it has nothing to do with the way that name is pronounced. My so, man's name is Shashevsky with no s's in it. Yo, no s's, no h's. My name is Shashevsky. Yo, my name is Kujawuski. It's like Chris Chris Bushki or something like that. Come on. Anyway, Coach. man, salute to the guy, man. Coach K. Okay. Cause, yeah, exactly, because Coach K has the most job security of any employee on the face of the earth right now. Yo, I just want to put it. I just want to put it out there, man. Like when it comes to North Carolina collegiate basketball, I hate all them teams, and that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. But I hate Duke. <laughs> I hate UNC. I don't think NC State matters enough for me to hate them. But I, I just I can't stand North Carolina collegiate basketball. But here's the question. The big question is that the offense is wild. What did you say? You hate them because they're good? Uh, no, they're great. They're great. I, I don't like Duke because um, the ignorant uh, side of me has bought into the fact that they don't produce real ones. Yeah, um, I respect you for being I, about that. Oh, you're getting I Jalen. I UNC. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Supportive of Jalen Rose's position. Um, UNC, I hate because they haven't been good since men wore women's shorts in basketball. To me, like, I, I just can't appreciate. They're, not that they haven't been good. They've been great. But I just, I haven't, you know, when Mike left, that took the air out for me. No. I Damn. Know, so I, I just, you going, you going that I don't, Damn. Yo, he, yeah, said yeah. Mike, yo, he said when Mike left. He said when Mike left. Damn. <laughs> So hold, up, hold up, though. You know, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you my problem with Duke. Though. Here's my problem with Duke. And it's, 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 it's similar to B. Austin, but it's not exactly B. Austin, right? So B. Austin said we call that the Jalen theory, right? About them being, you know, white kids that act a certain way. But my thing is, I know they're all not that, but the student athletes there have that bought into that. Like they come off like that. They they buy into that themselves and act like they don't come from the same place. As a lot of, you know, like some of them. Who you know, all of them aren't two family. They're all not Steph Curry, but they act like it when they get there. A a a um B. You know, North Carolina got four chips after Mike left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm and not. the thing was, yo, oh, Mike, Mike, yo, they hadn't won you, a chip you, in 25 you years. Have to, <laughs> you didn't have I'm, to point that out. I was struggling. I was struggling for a reason for my hate. I really ain't got none. I just well, said Mike. I'll, I'll Man, I've been running across a lot of stuff lately. <laughs> Yo, I ain't, I ain't hey, like UCLA. I got no reason. Right. All right. Well, we got I, 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 more. Um, you said since Kareem left. Damn, we got um bang with Kansas since the Dipper left. Um, let's go to the phone line. We got a couple more calls. 
<laughs> when you say the oh, dipper, we had the homie. And when you say the dipper, you could be you could be talking about cigarettes. So that could be Mike Beasley, because you know he liked to dip his cig. No, 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 Mike. Go ahead. We had Bad the joke. homie um, Tobias on there. He must have banged out. Jim, uh, screen team, real quick. I'll just go on right. to the to the next real quick NFL note before we get to this uh, next phone call here. Um, the Seahawks are reportedly working on a deal with the Raiders for Marshawn Lynch, um, because we all know that Marshawn Lynch plans to unretire. He has yet to file the unretirement paper, um, but he wants to go to the Raiders. So the Seattle Seahawks have to oblige him when he, uh, when he unretires, they're working out a deal with the Raiders. Um, I think the only thing holding it back is they're actively negotiating, um, a deal with the Raiders. I'm not going to say long term because he's, you know, he's not a, a spring chicken, but I hear that the deal that they're working on is going to be highly incentivized, which is, which is smart on the Raiders part, because, you know, you do want Marshawn Lynch if Marshawn Lynch becomes available, but he has sat out of football for a year. He's not the youngest dude, you know, out there. So you hit him with a bunch of incentives, you know, you hit this mark, you hit that mark and we'll look out for you. So, that's the I'm latest. Just glad, I'm just back. glad the brother. I'm just glad the brother's back in football because I understood exactly why he retired without him ever even telling the world, and he kept it. He kept it honorable because I think he respected the band, the brother's principle of the locker room, so he didn't really throw people on the bus. But right. his retirement started when Russell Wilson audibled out and called that play and threw the ball to the other team. That's when he retired. He had to get out of there. At that very moment, he couldn't and now, take Now, you know, he's going to go back to the crib and, and play for, for his yeah, Raiders. For a couple of seasons, um, four days. And they are saying the Raiders can make the trade with the Seahawks before he is formally reinstated. But if he uh, – they said he would be required to be fully reinstated as soon as a new contract is signed. So they're working on that. As we speak, if they haven't already gotten Yo, it done, um, we're going to go to the phone lines. I was, <laughs> was going to say real quick, before before we bring Joel on, I was going to say, like, um, uh, Six Flags in Bowie, Maryland, I'm just looking at the news coming across my screen. There, Yo, there's a coaster ride with people stuck at the very top, yo. Um, there's a what ride? A, a, ro- a roller coaster. Superman? I don't know what the name of the show is. It's on the news. Superman though, that hoe. You so I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure it's on your oh, local man. news, yo, but they stuck at yeah, the very top, I mean, yo. That they park at the is very five top. minutes from me. Yo, they're at the very top of that oh, job, man. yo. Man, I got stuck. That on. Oh, man. I, yo, I never trusted that park, though. It was a, you know, Daniel Snyder. Superman Black people. Oh, Daniel, Daniel Snyder. Snyder Daniel Snyder don't care. Yes. Yeah, he it don't care. It wasn't always a Six Flags. I think when he bought it, they got it down with the territory? Great Adventure. So oh, I always thought it was, you know, a little bit of a, a knockoff, you know, a, kind of a whack park, but, you know, it's the closest thing we got. So I've been a few times, but, yeah, Daniel Snyder owns it. Yeah, it's so corny. Total, disa- total disaster. Total disaster. Hey, Dev, I like how you made that. Total disaster. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> I like how you made that sports related. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Look. Uh, we're going to go to the phone line, and I know what this is about, so we might as well just give you guys our stat of the week. Um, our stat of the week for this week, Russell Westbrook breaks the record of Oscar Robinson. Go. Um, not only the average, in, not, not only did he finish the season averaging a triple-double, but he has 42 triple-doubles uh, in the season. Uh, on the phone line with us, we got the homie, Joel, y'all probably remember Joel. He, he used to come on with us and 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 talk. Uh, Yo, sports, WRC basketball, and most, uh, other things. But Joel Rodriguez and I have been having some conversations about this whole Russell Westbrook thing, and we finally get to talk about it on air. Joel, welcome back to the show, brother. What's going on? How you been? I'm doing great. Good evening, guys. How are all you guys? How are you, um, sir? Man, we're good. Doing all right. Yo, good, man. yo, how how old is B, man? That he quit know. North he Carolina after Mike left. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Joel, I was leaping from the ball in the air. I ran out. 
I ran out like, of thought. I ran out of thought. Like, like, all right, okay. cool. Okay. That was honest. That was honest hate. Sort of like your honest yeah. blessing. Yeah. Once well, he I, admitted I, it I afterwards. Speaking, like, speaking was, of yeah, hate, he saw. He saw he saw Lawrence Taylor in college. Jesus, that, that's a long. Yo, I didn't. I ain't like. I ain't like. Da, I ain't like Dante Calabria. I ain't like. You know, Ed Coda. I ain't like none of them. All right, all right. All right. Well, anyway, yeah. All right, so I, I, look, I just. Speaking I just of hate, put, I, I, and I've never I, called you a hater before in my life. I, I, but the conversation okay. we've had lately has put you in hater. that territory, at least about this topic. <laughs> All right, all right. So I you mean, have, we we you all issue we all hate every once in a while. It's fine. Double. What was, you, you what was that? Problem with this record? It's not that I have a problem with. It. I just I just I, I, you know what I have a problem with it, and, and it's it's because <laughs> I I just I don't tolerate stat padding, and 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 the rebounds are just flagrant, just blatant stat padding, man. Why? And, um, huh? it, let's let's say let's say he you know is stat padding. You know the player will never admit that. But let's say yeah. he is. It's easy to see. I don't think stat padding is a negative thing unless it's to the detriment of your team. They're actually well, I mean, a, a they're, they're uh, uh, an average team who turns into a very good team when he records a triple double. Okay. So, like, what is it hurting? Is, is my question. Well, I don't know what it's. I mean, look, the, last year, last year they were, I think, fourth. The fourth worst team against defending the point guards, and this year they aren't much better. They're a little bit better because they probably have Oladipo guarding the point guard. I think Oladipo is just a better defender. I think we can all agree on that, right? On the ball? Yes. Yeah, no? Yeah. Are you gonna disagree? Yeah, no, we can agree. With all that. right, cool. I'm, I agree with that. All right, so I, I do, I do think that that the roster helps them out defensively, and you know, it helps them run around and just play free safety on the on the floor, and and you know, run and grab the rebound and let other guys shoot. Um, I, I think him individually, though, I, I, the record is better when, when he gets a triple double, and it's because his triple doubles he scores forty points in the triple doubles and thirty five. It's not it's not like the Draymond triple doubles from last year, or the Rondo ones where they would get you know eleven, 10, 11, 10. And twelve. Like it's it's not it's not that it's 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 a triple double like times three, which which is fantastic. You know it's it's terrific. It's just me. It's just I, I don't I've never put that much like stock into a triple double for me to like sweat it. Like, like for me to just be all over it, and then when I see how he does it, like he gives up he his, he gives up 13 shots per game on defense, right? His the guy he's guarding takes on average 13 shots per game. He puts his hand up three and a half times out of those 13, so that means he's giving up 10 open shots. Like that to me is is embarrassing. Like I I can't I can't sit there and be like oh well he grabs 10 <clears throat> rebounds and like act like that's all cool. Like I, I can't I can't dig that man. But, that's all but I, was I mean, to say. but how do we know that this isn't coming from Billy Donovan though? Huh? Like, well, even if it's coming, how do we know well, he, he sucks from Billy, too. Billy but, it, but well, because but, but, when, but my, Kev, here's when my Kevin question, Durant, here's my question. Um, I, and the thing is, like you know, I understand. Listen, you've admitted that you're hating against him, so at that point, it's really nothing else to say. Uh, so, but my I, I'm, is, I'm hating. I'm hating a triple. Like I, I'm hating a triple double. I'm hating a triple double. I'm not hating. Like I don't hate Russ. When when Derrick Rose won MVP, I used to tell people Russ, Westbrook was better than Rose. I used to tell people this all. The time, so I don't. I don't really hate Russie. I just don't like the whole oh, the triple double as if it's like the greatest stat ever. I posted something earlier I mean, a couple minutes ago. Yeah, it's been yeah. so you're, you're, hate, you're hating on the triple double. As it's been fifty-five well, like, years. We thought no we'd one, never I, see I, this again. Yeah, I, honestly, I never thought I would see it in my lifetime. I never thought I, I would see it. He couldn't so, do it earlier in the season. I, under, yo, I understand yo, why people feel yo, the way they feel. About Joel, it, but at the same time, Joel, this is the equivalent of Barack Obama becoming president. Like we never thought we would see a black it, man in the White that, House. That, we I, never I, thought yeah, we would see a triple a double. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm dragging it. No, no, real talk. No, I mean, the Obama analogy was was, 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 was was. But I never yeah, that, thought that's, that that's, that's a bit much. That's a bit much. We also took it too far. We get that. But but that being <laughs> said, though, um, it, it's to me when I when I praise his season, it really has nothing to do with the fact that he had a triple double. I mean, that's icing on the cake. I just appreciate the way he plays. In fact, my criticism of him is that he plays at a pace that he wouldn't be able to keep up. For 82 games. That's Hell yeah. I thought. I that, thought, that's I thought amazing. he was burnt yeah. out. I thought Man, he was I'm burnt not, out. Yeah, he, took, too, a, he took a couple years off the end of his life. Well, let me ask you but a question, listen, though, Joel. When everybody Come talks up. about Come him up. stat padding and people letting him grab rebounds, you know, like I said, I've seen these videos. They show the same 10 rebounds and try to tell you that, you know, all, you know, they forget that he had 800 plus rebounds. 
Well, hold but on, I'm like, even even if that's the case, if you're next to Russell Westbrook and you're you know you're basically a nobody on this team, and you let him grab a rebound, how do we know that it's, that it's about a triple double? How do we know that Billy well, Donovan doesn't say? We want well, Russ crashing all the time. Point. If he gets the rebound, we rather him get the rebound so we can start the fast break. First, That's people say exactly Russell Westbrook plays right at there. one speed, but then when he gets the rebound and starts to break, now everybody's saying he's padding stats. Which is it? That's and, his and hold up. And I laugh at the whole fact of the matter is it was like he shouldn't have got that rebound. To miss shots, so you rebounds come off of missed shots. He's like, right. you know what I mean, like. Like, yeah, miss these foul shots so I can grab these boards. Like, I mean, tell dudes to make their foul shots. But I, 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 I mean, mean, look, look, this, this is, this is, uh, I, I've always been of the belief if a point guard outside of maybe kid, kid is probably the only like anomaly out of from this whole thing. If, if, if a point guard averages more than six rebounds a game, he's hurting your team on defense because he's not defending anybody. You, you have to be close to the rim to grab that many rebounds, and there's no reason for him to be that close to the rim. You know what I mean? Because he's supposed to be defending the guy on the perimeter. Like he's he's allowing open shots to fall. Yeah, and <laughs> I, gotta, I, I think got, it. We got a comment online, Joel, about this. They said Moses Malone also padded rebound stats, which is hilarious because if you have watched Moses footage, Moses used to just sit there and like tip the ball All to himself the off the backboard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's more. I mean, that's, that's, more, that's, that's more egregious than I mean, look. This. That 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 uncontested the uncontested rebound stat is is probably the nerdiest stat I've ever believed in. Like, I, I, admittedly, it's, <laughs> it's, you know, it's 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 taking analytics a little too far. You know, I'm I'm a bit of an analytics guy, and, I, and I'm you know I, I take it too far. But you see that stat, and he's the only point guard, and like the, he's the only guard in like the top thirty in the whole thing. Like you, you see Whiteside and Gobert and and, and Gortat and all these other big men, and then Tim, he's there. Like you don't see, you don't, you don't let him strike you with that. that, that is, he's that, the that's only guard crashing amazing. the boards. That's what makes that's it all the only guard crashing it, the boards. Like, what? Well, but but why? Is, but what's what's he doing to crash the board? He's letting this guy shoot to do it. Like and they don't says, always they don't always but, miss. But you say that like they don't saying that miss. like every rebound that's the case. I'm not saying that he doesn't do it. I've seen footage. I've seen him do it. But but then another thing you have to acknowledge that none of these guys actually guard their premier matchup night in and night out anyway. They'll put Westbrook on the worst dude on there for And in a league where everybody's launching threes, it's obviously working for them because everybody's launching threes and everybody can't shoot. Also, <laughs> but they I shoot anyway. What I find interesting is I, I think it's something to the fact that the coach wants them to do this to get their offense started, which essentially means that his numbers are a product of the system, if you want to say that. And that can be the okay. case. But I think the same, I think the same thing applies to a James. I think the same thing applies to a James Harden, though. Are his numbers yeah, not man. a product well, of the well, system? Yeah, man. Yo, Mike D'Antoni is, is James Harden's soulmate. Like that. That was like the the, the yeah, I, match Antonio made in heaven. MVP so, maker, man. <laughs> so I, it, I, yeah, I, it I is a product of the system. I told people that uh, Mike D'Antoni needs to start charging the MVP tax to his star players. Listen, when I come in town. Get you an yeah, how about that? I mean, the like, I can't charge this team with chip tax, but I can charge you an MVP race tax. <laughs> yeah, so I think that, it, I mean, at the worst case, he's a product of the system, which is fine. Because the one thing I do recognize is when we talk about Oscar Robertson, no one's ever broke down how many people could shots he contested that year. Uh, you know, none, none of well, these well, advanced well, we analytics well, were done. I mean, I mean I that, was, that was 40 years ago, but we, we always put up the, the, the stat of pace. In the NBA, the NBA was like hot potato back then, and and it was it was a little bit easier to like R- Bill Russell used to grab like twenty rebounds a game at that point because it, you know everybody yeah. was just throwing shots I, up every I, I five think, seconds. I think it was, like if, if you put more, if you put more shots, right? So he had uh, thirty right. more shots on so that. Right. So if you if you put that Russell Westbrook at that impressive. pace, he'd average forty, twenty, and twenty. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So that's what I mean. Like, so why is it still impressive? If you add those, I guess, I guess you weren't also. But I'm not saying it's not Robinson impressive. I'm not. I'm not saying it's not impressive. I'm just saying I'm not as impressed as you guys are. That's all. You just don't like, like that. that, that that's all I'm trying to say. Like it's not. It's not some. You know. It's not something that I'm just going to give him MVP for. Just on the basis of that. Well, I don't. I don't. That's not my main reason. I. I think. I don't think highly of OKC's roster. So the fact that they're okay. in the Western Conference playoffs, there now. This is speculation. And I, I generally don't get into speculative, speculative arguments. But if you think about it, there's a possibility that if they were in the Eastern Conference, you know, it's always if, 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 they, could, they will possibly be the number one seed, and everybody will be thinking oh, about Jesus this Christ. MVP uh, 
totally different because everybody that? now that he's in the race, everybody say, well, what happened to winning? And and the people that are saying that for Harden, Harden, you know, we're, we're acting like, I mean, if we're gonna just focus on winning, then it should be Kawhi Leonard's award to lose. Yeah. But but think about yeah. it. If he doesn't have to, if he if he has to play all of those Eastern teams three and four times versus two times, they would probably be the number one seed in the East. And, and this know. whole who, said, who is this? Who's this talking? This is Dev. Why 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 don't Dev. you think that why, could Dev? be viable? Well, they were eighteen and twelve against the East, I think. I'm trying, I just did quick math. I, so I don't, yeah, so I don't think you if give you give them, them two more games an against everybody. Game, no, I mean, they, they got to play Cleveland two more times, Boston two more times. You know, uh, uh, who, who the hell is the third seed? Toronto two more times. Like, I, I don't think exactly. those are easy points. Who the hell is it? That's that's the thing. Like, no matter you know, Boston is the man. The Clippers, one seed, dog, the, the, the still Clippers, Cleveland, the Jazz, and then the Clippers, else. the Jazz, the Grizzlies aren't you know much better than the five, six, seven teams in the East either. You know, like the Nuggets, the, I, th- I thought the Nuggets were the most underrated team in the league coming into the season. So I wasn't surprised mm-hmm. that they made a playoff push. But, I mean, they won 40 games too. Like, And, and the bottom of the Western Conference is straight trash. Minnesota, the Lakers, the Suns, you know the what, Kings, though? they played them all four times. That's 16 games here, against here's the thing. four to six I, I don't know. in the NBA. Hey, Joel, I, I, this is Jimmy speaking, by the way. I don't know what would have happened if they would have been in the East. Like, you know, I can't speculate. On I mean, that, I but what I, can, what, I, what I can say is this, though. What I can say is that, I've come to that the, to the realization too that the West is overrated. Like it's literally yeah. No, it is it, 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 the it, West it, isn't what it was, but it's still a better conference. Like, I mean, uh, but, I, I, but, think, but, but, I, I, I don't think, think, think it's that I good. It, I, it, I think Golden State is going to run through the whole West. I conference think if it is, it's slightly, and I think that the big difference between say, and I agree with that. Versus I think West, Golden State's going to run through it. I think I think that like we have to com- compare each conference. I think the one thing that tips the scale to the West is literally one team, and that's the Spurs. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. everything else seems to be equal. Like, you put Cleveland at the top of the East, you put Golden State at the top of the West. Everything else to me seems equal with the exception of the Spurs. So the Spurs kind of yeah. tilt the power to the West. I, Outside I of that, that, I think I, it's kind of even. I do think it's even. I, I think the Spurs are a little overrated, too. I think I think they're not Whoa. that athletic. And I do. I, I, don't, I don't think they're very athletic, and I, don't, I think they work a little too hard to score. And I think that's going to get exposed. Maybe in the maybe not in the first round, but in the second round, I think it's going to get exposed. I also see what they do with Kawhi now. Other teams on when uh, when he's on defense, and um, you know, I think that's going to get exposed more too. They don't even the, the guy that Kawhi is guarding doesn't even come get the ball anymore. They just stick him in the corner and they make the other guys play one on one, four on four, and 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 they just have a field day with San Antonio's defense. San Antonio's defense is like ten points better when Kawhi isn't on the floor. Like that's crazy because it, it, he didn't just forgot how he didn't just forget how to play defense. They just made it, you know, obsolete. And I and I think yeah. I but think you don't it's, think, think that's going to be exposed. To adjust to that? I mean, what's what's he going to do? Like I, I was watching. I remember I was watching this game um, against the Bulls, and I, I, I play fantasy basketball. I, I was probably maybe you guys do too. And I had Jimmy Butler on one team, and I was and they were playing the Spurs, and Jimmy Butler didn't take a single shot in the first half. And I'm like, yo, Kawhi's really shutting this guy down. So I switched to the game, and I'm seeing Kawhi, Jimmy Butler's not even coming to the ball. Like, he's not even checking, like, trying to get the ball. And the Bulls were up by like 10 at the half. And all they did was they put Kawhi on Dwayne Wade, and then they just stuck Dwayne Wade in the corner. And Jimmy started shooting. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was like damn this is crazy what they're doing and now I see a lot of teams that went when uh, Golden State plays in damn the they night. respect yeah they, 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 Draymond Draymond had like six five and five that game he didn't do anything that game all he did was they they stuck Draymond in the corner and they just ran the pick and roll with Steph the whole game and Steph was cooking them like and I I think that's gonna get exposed when they play a team that can that has more than two scores like if they play Houston I think they're just gonna kill them that way. Or or uh, the Clippers or some like whoever I think you got a guy that can run a pick now, and roll. Now, they're gonna, now, they're gonna crush now I'm going to look out for that. I, I I didn't pick up on that, but I want to look out for it now that you said that. Yeah. All yeah, right. definitely. No, that's that's, right. that's definitely something to put your to put your eyeballs on. No doubt, Joel. You know we appreciate it. Uh, when you call Joel, in, we still Joel, before you go, before you go. procrastinating. We got to do who's that. Your, who's your MVP, Joel? Is it is it Harden or you have somebody else as your MVP? It's it's Harden for me, mainly because he was I, I put two hundred dollars on him before the season started, and he was plus okay. nine hundred, and it, that's that's a nice little lick if he wins. But also, they, they Houston's ex, no no team has exceeded their expectations as far as projected win totals than Houston. No team, 
you know, and and he's put up a, a massive season on, on his own in his own right. And if you compare, again, I, I know I'm an analytical nerd, but if you compare his advanced stats to the other MVPs, he's in line with theirs. Whereas Westbrook's is not. Westbrook is just really good with counting stats, where in efficiency he falls short of Harden. I, I, so I, think once, I put Harden. Once, in. once you said that, I already figured out what it was because I, I understand how what James Harden is doing from an analytical standpoint. All any anyone I know who's into analytics. Are pretty much jizzing over themselves it's, because of the it's team a hard guy, has. right? Right. Yeah. I, I made a, I made mention of that too. It's, it's it's the great divide. It's more counting stats versus. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'll never. And, yeah. I'll, I'll never diss James Harden. Like I'm not gonna. You know I mean, he's one of my favorite players, and he he has had an amazing season. You know, but, I would well, just on, go another way. One, one last one last question, Joe. <laughs> one last, I'm sorry to keep keep doing this, but uh, you don't count defense for anything when you think about an MVP. Of course I do. But I, I think Westbrook's defense has been non-existent, just like Harden. So it, it's it yeah, kind of gives it out. Kawhi. Kawhi plays defense, nah. and then Kawhi, <laughs> Kawhi. Uh, I mean, I, I like number two I like Kawhi team. too. But I mean, I, I would look. I wouldn't mind like if Westbrook won a Kawhi won. Like they're all deserving. Like I, I'm, this is one of the best NBA regular seasons in a long time. Like as yeah. far as um, you know, just just wild that. stats and and uh. D- 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 uh Greek freak. He was the first the first player ever to finish top twenty in all five since major categories: points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks. He was the top. He, no other player has ever done that. Like that's right. that's insane. The yeah, fact that somebody's that. doing that now. You know Not what I mean? So um, it. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's you know we we saw a lot of great individual performances. So whoever wins is deserving. I don't think if Harden loses, he'd be robbed of it per se. I'm just you know I just lean more towards him to win. Got it. you. No one puts Kawhi in the corner. All right, man. We're gonna blame this on Jimmy. We gotta get together soon and 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 do an episode or something, either on we here do. or uh, on on uh, YouTube. We gotta do something though. All but good. Thanks for your call, man. All right, man. man. I, I know we I, appreciate all it. All you guys are the best, man. You guys have a good night. All right, right you too, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Peace, yo. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um. Yeah. So you know, we 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 gave our stat of the week and everything. We we'll, we have some more calls online, but we'll get into the NBA rap because that's what we uh, would like to talk about. So if you're calling in, I hope you're talking about NBA stuff. Um, but real quick, you can check out our website at warroomsports.com to call in and speak with us about NBA topics because we're about to you know, talk about the playoffs. We might get to our NBA awards. If we don't, then we might just go ahead and do that next week. We know we got a lot of time since they're taking the NFL's cue and making an award show and they're not doing it until after the NBA Finals. I, I don't really think this is a good idea. But um, <laughs> people have forgotten about the regular season by the time the Finals are over. Uh, but anyway, uh, if y'all want to call in and speak with us about any of those NBA topics, just dial the Digital Extreme Tech hotline at number 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. If you're already listening from your phone, just press 1 if you want to talk. So Jimmy, pay this bill, and then we'll go back to the phone line real quick. Absolutely. The NBA Rap is brought to you by Sports the Book. Listen, what? bottom line, it's the best sports book you'll ever read. you got to get it. And you can do so by going to sportsthebook.com or going to warroomsports.com, and you can cop up right there. You already know, written by yours truly, and it'll change your life. But like Dev said, it's time to talk about this thing of ours. It is basketball time, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, sir. All right. And I think uh-huh. we, we got we got the brother uh we got the brother Tobias back on the line, so we'll get to him real quick before we go in on this NBA stuff some more. Tobias, what's going hey. on, brother? What's going on? Make sure for mouse to come out here and chop my foot foot off to make this quick. <laughs> uh but uh I wanted to call in earlier because I had to take care of something at work, but I want to talk about Des Bryant real quick. Can I chime mm-hmm. on that real go quick? Go ahead, go ahead. Get, get it in All real right. quick so we can get back to this. All right, I will say this, because I know you saw on my page. And I think what people don't understand, no one talks about, like, what people talk about working hard with black people, being a professional athlete, you won the lottery. What many people don't get, no matter how hard you work, no matter how in shape you're in, the average human being could be lucky to break the 40 in six seconds. Most people can't bench press 225 pounds in shape people. So what I'm saying is that with us, we got to stop looking at people who said, oh, I made it out because I won a genetic lottery. Because what would many of those athletes be 
if they did in a tough environment, or even a regular black person who didn't have those athletic gifts. For example, I got a if people talk about blaming ourselves, I got home. We all know black folks who got their money right, got their credit right, still can't get a business loan. I got a homeboy of mine in Atlanta, money right, credit right, but the white man still won't rent, rent him a building. How is that our fault? And I think that's where a lot of people mess up at, man. Yeah, we went in on Des a little bit earlier. You know, a lot of people have trouble looking outside of their own box. So once they make it, like I said, his his situation was difficult, per se. So he feels, if I can make it out of this difficult situation, then anybody can make it. But he's not looking at all of the variables um, that it would take for people to make it out of even his situation, situations that, you know, different from his. Regular folks. Yeah, you you just can't you, you just can't make that you know you can't paint that with such a broad brush. Um, but I always tell people that in, in debates because people always like to use you know we're talking about something broad and people like to always use their circumstances. But you got to get out of that box. You know sometimes you got to wear other people's shoes and get other people's perspectives in order to understand. You know I don't I don't think he meant anything malicious by it. I just he think did. it was a very uneducated uh, statement to make. And he went on a little and, and Twitter rant. He didn't just say one thing. He kept going with it. And he started the whole thing I, by quoting Charles Barkley. So that's where he lost right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll say this before I get on the NBA. And what, see, the difference between black athletes and entertainers and white ones, many of us got family members who don't have access to nothing, and we still have to prop them up. Not saying that we're angry about that, but if Peyton Manning didn't make the NFL – Daddy had money, had access and stuff like that for him to get a job. Look at Cooper. He he, he didn't play football. He had a back injury. Yes, look where he at right now, like making damn good money. So got the act. You don't have that access. But I want to talk about basketball real quick. LeBron James pretty much saying f the regular season, and no one's saying that. That to me, that kills ratings. That that makes the casual fan say, if you don't care about this, why should I care? But here's the other thing, Dev and Jimmy and B Austin. Overconfidence is going to bite them in the behind. And this I other think thing, that's possible because they 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 are he, kind of <laughs> disrespecting the Eastern. I know I disrespect the Eastern Conference a lot, but I don't have to go out there. You know what I'm saying? I can I can write tickets that I don't have to. You know, I can write checks that I don't have to cash. Like LeBron and the Cavs, you actually have to go out there and make it happen. And when like you LeBron have, and whatnot. when you have the inside track at the number one seed and you just shut it down. But with your three superstars and say, ah, we don't need it. Like, that, yo, that's a that's a big kick in the face to the rest of the Eastern Conference. I mean, you already had the target on your back because you run the East. Now it's like, oh, he's disrespecting us too. But but but, but think about this. Think about this. He don't rest against the bad teams. Oh oh oh, they'll they'll play against the bad teams, but rest against the good ones. You know, they rest against the Clippers, but they go play for the against the Lakers. And the thing is, if old like I remember everybody was killing Odell Beckham for partying a week before the game, LeBron ain't even playing party and say, hey, I'm chilling tonight. And here's the other well, one. Well, that night they partied, they had just got smacked by 26 by the Hawks. And then Thank you. the next day after the party, they didn't play against the Heat, which, you know, the Heat had playoff implications. So maybe he was helping the Heat out. Maybe. He was trying to avoid having to play against his buddy, Dwayne Wade. You know, know, this whole thing, I think it may be something bigger going on here with the league because outside of even Cleveland, because, you know, everybody makes this LeBron issue, you know, because he is the best player in the world, no neck. But uh, it's like when you look at some of these these teams that sit out, it's like Tobias said, they – I mean, the Warriors, sometimes they sit out players in the Spurs too. They sit out against good teams. Like, I don't nationally know, nationally televised game. Yeah, is there some beef going on with like the owners or 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 like the commissioner? Like, it seems like they're trying to prove a point, and I'm not into I'm not in the inner workings, so I don't know what like what's really going on. But it seems. Is Jimmy there? Oh, Jimmy just conked out. That, I mean, this is supposed to be the owner. Uh, this is supposed to be the commissioner that everybody loves. Like, but I like good old Adam Silver. Hey, here's the problem. Know. David Stern went. They, blog talk, blog yeah. talk radio is after Jimmy. Uh, he made a he made a, a remark about 
the uh, leadership at Blog Talk Radio and then end up getting caught with their wife in public. That person's <laughs> wife, so they after Jimmy, man. My fault, my fault, my fault, fam, yeah. my fault, fam. They definitely, they definitely after me, man. They don't like, they don't like a lot of my um, my comments online. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. My, but you, my should, point you is shouldn't like, have done that with, with you shouldn't have done that with their wife, man. With the wife, man. That's, that's, how, that's ahead, how you move ahead. now. I'm on my, on my drizzy jump. But my point is, it just seems to me, it seems to me, it's something bigger going on with how these teams are approaching by sitting out. Like they're trying to cause the league damage to sh- like flex their muscle. But they mess up their money because here's the thing. I'll say this. I know y'all got to get going. And thanks for taking my call. But here's the thing. They making more money than every – people look at it like this. Hold on. You got eighth, ninth, tenth men making $10 million a year. You got somebody named Mike Connolly who, whose daddy's more better athlete than famous. You know, shout out to Mike Connolly Sr. of up there killing the, the foot like a slam dunk 20 years ago. But, uh, you know, but here's the thing, guys. It turns off your fan base, and you don't want to alienate your fan base. And be like, it's like the one thing. This I don't get with Kyle Cleveland, like the Spurs rest. People get rest, they monitor minute. Nobody playing forty five. Cleveland's like, hey, LeBron, Love, and D. Uh, Kyrie. Everybody else playing forty five minutes. How's that fair? <laughs> Nobody hey, talks about that. Do you think Tristan Thompson's is mad thing. about that? Tobias, it definitely turns the fans off. That's why I kind of, you know, I get frustrated with people when they try to defend this whole thing because, um, and, you know, I I guess I'm guilty of it too because I'm about to use my own example. But, you know, being where I am, there's a lot of example of, you know, myself here because this is pretty much a transient area. Like, I live in a town that I'm not from. I know you know about that too, Tobias, because you you do as well. So... I know you just like me. If you're going to a Phoenix Suns game, then, you know, you're going there to either see your Bulls or your favorite. Like, I have a a five-year-old who's really getting into basketball right now. You know, when you're that age, everybody that's on national TV the most are the the guys you like. You know, besides, you know, me forcing them to love the Sixers. He, you know, he loves LeBron. He loves (laughs) Steph. He loves Russell um, he loves all of those top tier superstars that they constantly market on TV because you know the NBA does not market teams, they market individual stars. So living in a town where I'm you know, where I'm not from, if we go to a Wizards game, it's either to go see the Sixers because they're in town or it's to pay exorbitant amounts of money because you know ticket prices fluctuate depending on who's coming to town to see the Cavaliers, the Warriors, um, you know, I can't even keep, you know, okay, you know, whoever has the game that it's, that it's potential that we go to. So we pay those tickets that are higher than normal Wizards tickets price. And I go to these games and we find out that dudes are healthy scratch. Like you feel some type of way about that. man. You, you yeah, really and I'll do. say this before I go. I'll say this before I go. Colin, y'all know I'm a Bulls fan. I still hate my team. I hate the organization. But I didn't go this year because I remember Jimmy Butler and D-Wade going to sit there and sit out. And I'm like, man, do I want to pay $220 a ticket before we were talking about parking, food, and all that? And it's like $20, $30 parking here. Do I want I to pay all that and food and drink? And they don't show up, and I got to watch some guy named Zipper and, Dan- and Valentine and <laughs> these goons? No, you don't want to do that. And that was, and that's what's going to hurt the product, not more than TV, when you start right. turning the TV on and got empty stands because people don't want to risk it. And the crazy hey, thing is, it broke easy, man. for uh, ticket sales. Hey, you got to take it easy, man. All right, man. Good luck. Hey, I'll, I'll be out there uh, this coming week, man. So I'll, I'll hit you online. We'll get together. Yeah, I, I inbox you my number, man. We'll get we'll get together. All right. All Yo, right. man. Yo, real no quick, doubt. right? I know I know we about to talk about some uh some hoops, but I just got to bring this breaking news. Um, you know, I I forgot the town bike, but uh, yo, your man Eli Manning just got caught up. Yo, shout out to whoever we bit that off of. Was that like Current Affairs or one of them, John? I think Current Affairs. All right, yo, shout out to your man, Eli Manning, who just got caught up and snitched on himself. Like, my man got caught up in a scandal. He was part of a scheme to sell fake Giants memorabilia and fake like it was game-worn. And they got, like, text messages and documents of him sending text messages to equipment managers. Like, yo, this could pass for, like, you know, being used. Why? Why? (laughs) Yo, Eli said, look, man. But why? You make a lot of money. money. Why? 
Oh man, yeah, we gonna we gonna go in on Eli next week. Yo, salute to <laughs> Eli, on, for, Eli. Me- for messing the family name up, man. Why? I just thought, like <laughs> I would that'd be the question I asked all week. Why? I don't even understand that. Yo, First of all, <laughs> Eli's selfish. Like look, Eli got Eli got trophy cases in his basement with all his game worn stuff. Eli ain't giving this away. But yo, I but Alicia, I act like Alicia, yo, Alicia want all that bread, yo. Yo, why Eli? Yo. It's all good here in the NFC East. They need to go ahead and uh, <laughs> they need to go ahead and memorabilia gate his ass, suspend him, <laughs> and give my my birds a, a, an extra shot at trying to be good in this division. So you're bad, Eli. Memorabilia gate is in full effect. All right, yo, that that that's crazy. I, I'm still saying why. I just wanted to ask you guys a quick question because mm-hmm. you know I've been fighting the the, the rest. Defenders lately online in personal arguments and that kind of stuff, but I, I I threw a question out there the other day because I know a lot of the same people that I talk to and some of the same people that you know the people that we can actually get their opinions the people on TV the people online stuff like that. A lot of people went crazy when Allen Iverson went through his little practice rant. You know what I'm saying? And and though Allen Iverson never actually said that, you know, he didn't respect practice, he you know, you can probably tell by his actions, but you know what I'm saying, that wasn't actually the, the point of the whole rant, but they ran with it and made it out to be the point. So if you have a problem with Allen Iverson and however many practices he missed for whatever reason, like how are you good with players resting on game night when, you know, you got paid tickets involved with this? I, I just don't understand it because I look at one as – and somebody somebody answered the question and it, it made sense to me because I was like, you know, he's not cheating the, 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 the fans. And I think the guys resting are cheating the fans. They said, well, Allen Iverson cheated his teammates. And and these guys might be cheating the fans. Okay, I'll, I'll give somebody that in that situation. But considering the makeup of that seventy six team, Allen Iverson was a gift to his teammates. But that might be my bias talking. But but do y'all think like why do y'all think some people had such a problem with practice, even though he wasn't saying he didn't bang come, practice? He back, was saying why are we back. talking about practice when I put it on the line every night? It, and you got guys now with modern comes, medicine. That's better than back then. Um, you know, they're bigger, they're stronger. But all of these advanced analytics are telling them, oh, sit out the back, back, you know, the second half of a back-to-back and it'll keep you healthy and this and that. Why are they not as upset with that as they are with practice? Um, it comes back to what, one of the things we always talk about. Fans, and, and especially in today's game, it, it shows itself more because people are able to express their opinions via social media and all of that. Everybody's a reporter. But fans make excuses for the players that they personally like, and they ignore facts and ignore logic when it comes to someone they don't like. So AI was a polarizing figure, and everybody that he, – he, he kind of suffers, and bear with me on this, but he suffers from the same thing LeBron suffers from when going up against a a, a, a Steph Curry, right? Allen Iverson was able to do things that natural human being, no human being can do that. My man <laughs> used drugs all summer long and did not play basketball and did allegedly, not train allegedly, and would come in. No. Allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, this is what he was accused of, and would come in and run a six-minute mile and be able to bust the ass of anybody in practice and anybody no else human was on the court in front of him. <laughs> people, didn't, people didn't like that, and he was marketed as representative of hip-hop, representative of young black masculinity, so there were people, both black, white, Asian, everyone that bought into that and said, hey, you know what? I don't like that guy and what he represents, so it doesn't matter what he does. It doesn't matter how hard he plays. I'm going to latch on to anything I can to drag him down. LeBron, in this case, has supporters 
that will say, well, we like what he represents, what he stands for, he's great. So we're going to ignore our miserable lives, and we're going to prop LeBron up and give him excuses and give the Banana Boat Boys excuses as society moves along and excuses the lack of competitive greatness and excuses you know, it's, players just giving it's, up. It's funny, giving up, right? You know, it, it, it's funny. Because, it's funny to me because I, I think overall, what's happened in the NBA is like we're just at a different time. The culture of basketball has changed, right? Um, some people like to say it's the AAU AAUization of the league. Um, mm-hmm. I saw I saw Michael Rappaport. He said he called it the skinny genification of the NBA. <laughs> um, so people have different things. Some people yeah, like, he you went know, on Levar Ball too. Shout out, yeah. shout out to Michael Rappaport. So some people have different ways to describe kind of what's going on with the league. But it's funny because when I sit and think about is all my OGs and my old heads when I was a young boy talking about the Magic and Mike, and they told me they was punks and they was P U double S. You know what I mean? Because they would talk about you know Wilt and Russell have to ride on the on a bus 1,800 miles and play six games and in two nights and you know they would. So it's it's, it's funny how I you know now I'm the uh, grumpy old man talking about you know, what happened in my day. So I, it's, it's a complete culture change. Um, and, you know, I remember salute, Magic salute. and Michael even went on Allen Iverson about the whole practice thing. You heard exactly. Magic, I so, love practice. Shut up. Man. Yeah, so so essentially it's one of those things where cultures change. <laughs> everybody, every, you know, um, the analogy I use is, you know, the, the snow analogy, like, you know, back in my day when it snowed, we went to school in 74 feet of snow. So, and as time goes on, those things become more and more exaggerated. But now oh, we yeah. do live in a different time. We live in a time of analytics, and analytics is used by, you know, salute the money ball because analytics has changed the game, and once that movie came out, it was a wrap because analytics was being used quite before that, but that mm-hmm. kind of, you know, put it in terms of being a part of pop culture, and now people spend a gazillion dollars to deal with big data, and they follow big data. Data I think tells analytics is drawn a little bit, man. You know, but see, here, it's sort of like what Joel Of course said. it does. Salute to Joel, because Joel made a lot of great points. And one of the points that he made is, listen, analytics is good, but you can take it too far. He admitted, sometimes I take it too far. You know what I mean? He said, like, that one stat is probably the, the, the nerdiest he's gotten on it. Jimmy, analytics can't go too far. Jimmy, there's, never, there's no end to it. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy I can appreciate everything, every, everything that you're saying, and I can appreciate your position and where you're coming from, but I think in all of what you're saying, one thing I want to make sure that we don't lose sight of. Right is right and wrong is wrong. When you do certain, and I'm not saying that, that throughout the generations, players, teams, and all of those, all of those stakeholders in this discussion didn't do wrong things. But right now, when the good of the brand and the good of the game is falling lower and lower on the priority scale, that's wrong. So it's not just the difference yeah. in generation. It's Did not you, just you rode no, the bus it, 1,800 miles and I get to fly on a jet. Yo, these cats, don't respect the game. I mean, the no, listen, listen. I, that, 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 that's, from your perspective, that's how you take it, right? But I, I, now, if I'm a coach and I have all this big data in front of me that tells me, hey, if I sit a guy down every Wednesday, it increases his chance of not getting injured. Like, like coaches are making some of these decisions and they're doing it based upon their jobs because it's sort of our fault as fans when you think about it because we say it's all about the championship and nothing else matters. You know what I mean? But then you see something like the Nets last night who have no shot at one of the chips, and they sit down too. So that, that's a whole different story. But in the grand scheme of things, the, what bothers Probably. people the most is, is, is when the Warriors do it, is when LeBron does it. And some of these guys consider themselves doing what's uh, the best for the team. They don't care about the league. They're doing what's best for their job and for the team. And I don't know – and I also think that it's something else going on. they say something that, different, though. When they go on TV, they talk about how important the fans are to them and this and that. Like, we have to put this in perspective, BS. man. Sports is primarily entertainment. I know that's their livelihood Again, and all that kind game, of stuff. It's a but, game of amusement. Right. With your man Trump dropping the largest bombs ever on people and, you know – about to put us in the World War Three, and the fact that Trump is president, and we're living like Back to the Future, Steve, all of this shout stuff out to Steve in Bannon. the larger scheme of things, in the history books, it's not going to be important who won the NBA title in 2017. But sports is our release. But I think sometimes we put sports on too much of a pedestal. We make it too serious in society. But at the same time, if 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 you're really invested in something in sports. 
a lot of people, most people, I would I would guess, okay, your team loses in the NBA Finals. Yeah, it's it's messed up. But most people will be over it and back to their Listen. miserable lives in a, in a Listen, day. Or two. Man. And, you know and, I, and I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with either one of you, but I, I'm also like a believer in, um, you know, like uh, the economist Milton Freeman once said, like the market always corrects itself. So if this is really that much of a problem, it's up to us, those that watch and those that consume this content, to move on from it. And, you know, depending upon what you look at, <laughs> which data you look at, that is happening. And if it happens too much, oh, believe me, they'll adjust. Because at the end of the day, we control everything. The consumers control what we see and what happens. But if we're still willing to throw and shell dollars and when we don't even know who may who may or may not play, change won't happen. Like we we the people, not 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 to get on my founding fathers, John, but we have all the power. And what we've done to sports is we say it's about championship or nothing. So do say okay, it is about well, that's championship. That's why dudes be agreeing with this. Well, they yeah, they agree with this because the math damage. is still that way. No, nah, if, if that's the case, stop charging for games. You know what I'm saying? Stop marketing individual players. And, you know, and, I, and, I, get, and I get that, but, that, but that's up to us Let's too. Stop with the, if, we, the free enterprise, if we stop like, going, you know? if we stop going, they have to adjust. The thing is, we've bought in so much. We, it, it, this, is, this is a narcotic to us. We're, I don't we're think so the NFL. Te- I mean, I don't think the NBA is Teflon like the NFL. So, and yeah, I don't either. Could. But that's what I'm saying. But it's, it's up to us to tell them FOH if they know yeah. it's going to come anyway. Like this is essentially a drug to us. You know what I mean? Like you know, if you're on the block and ain't nobody buying, you lower your prices to try to get people there. Even if you got that, you know what I mean? That Garbitos, people will still come get it because of the price. <laughs> I mean, ah, yo. <laughs> I mean, you know, not not to use that analogy, but it's a it's a fact. Though. Yo, my son, my son, my son would not condone that analogy. Brother. No, I'm just saying, but it's a fact though. That's how the that's how the world works. That's technically how the Remember world works. In, nah, that was back in February. NBA chuckle. TV ratings were down 15, percent but I that's why I think it, it's not Teflon like NFL because I think I the league, I think the ratings were down 15 percent because. I think last year and, and, you know, the few seasons preceding that, I think they were terrible. I think yeah, this yeah. was, the like, like Joel said earlier, it's the best NBA season in a minute. Mm-hmm. So next year they might see the residual effects of that and, you know, the, the ratings might be up on TV, which is more important to them because the big money comes with the TV. Contract. It comes from TV. And it's funny because right. most NBA fans I talk to say the same thing. I'm like – Yo, players is literally working like they were. They're taking weeks off at a time, and we still talk about how great a season it is. So, right, and I'm and I'm guilty. They're gonna, him. they're gonna take it further next year. They're gonna be like, Yo, I'm taking this whole month off. I'm I'm guilty because as much as I've talked trash about the NBA regular season over the past decade, I've been an NBA league pass subscriber every year. I mean, at the same time, we you know we still we do this so. You know, yeah. I, I get a certain level of knowledge I mean, from being Jimmy, able to watch Jimmy. every game, but damn it, I need to cut the cord and pirate to, it to, somehow because it hasn't been worth it. But I keep to buying refer, it. To refer back, to refer back to your analogy, though, brother, when you say the market, like if we can look at this as if we can look at what the players are doing now more as fundamentals as opposed to technicals, which move a lot quicker then what you're really saying is the fact that these guys' behavior is egregious. It hasn't shown up in. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, people still, uh, yeah. I know, he toe, toe got him, but I know where you were going with that, and it hasn't shown up anywhere. Nothing, nothing has happened. In fact, it seems to be more popular right now because of the Russell Westbrook, James Harden, and these, these ridiculous numbers that people are putting up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just saw a stat today. Like, um, who led the league in rebounds? Whoever it was averaged, like, damn near 15 boards. Um, it wasn't uh, uh, DeAndre. DeAndre led the league in field goal percentage. Somebody else led the league in rebounds. Whoever it was, it was damn near 15 rebounds. I'm like, you know. Um, was it Whiteside? Yeah, it was Whiteside. It was Whiteside. Yeah, it was. Definitely him. But that was the point. Like, you know, it, it's crazy, man. Like, nothing's happening in the box office. So, therefore, the way the way the game is currently going will continue to do that. I mean, it's up to us. Like we did, we control it, whether we want to believe that or not. The right, never, of course, we're gonna get to our saying. awards next week. Um, Jim, you just wanted to shout out the uh, players of the week. Uh, we don't have to do. I'm not gonna do their stats. But yeah, absolutely. PG, shout them out, and then P- we can P- pick P- these P- first. P- 
PG-13, which I still think is a fire nickname. My uh, man. Player of the Week, PG-13, and, uh, and uh, Russell we- <laughs> Triple Double Russ Face, Russell Westbrook, are the MVPs. My um, man, Skeletor. Two, two of my favorites. Yo, Russ, I saw a chick yesterday. I shouldn't be talking because this girl probably was only in high school, but she had Russ slash Carrie Kittle's face. Like, how can you Yo. look like them at the same time? Carrie Kittle's an ugly ball. Like, <laughs> And Russ is a... Yo, Sorry, anyway, yeah. man, I don't even want to comment on that, man. I don't like disrespecting babies, man. Anyway. Um... Everybody like, yeah. Sugar. <laughs> Yo, somebody gonna knock her. <laughs> Yo, real quick, though. Um, Let's let's go through some matchups real quick in the first round. Uh, Blazers, versus, Blazers versus Warriors. I'm going with the yeah. Warriors. I don't think anybody here is going to pick the Blazers. Warriors in... Warriors in five. The Blazers will get one game because the Warriors will will, will rest. <laughs> they gonna rest their whole squad. Yo. They gonna do it. The, yo, what y'all gonna do when they start doing this in the playoffs though? That's real they, different. They, yo, it's gonna happen. They gonna go up yo, like three and they gonna, gonna, yeah. they gonna go get three, one. three zero and rest their starters. Yo, anyway, I'm saying the Warriors probably in four. Yo, get them out of here. Be awesome. What you got, beloved? I got Warriors in six. They gonna rest and they are gonna have to get their continuity yo. back. All right, no doubt. Uh, the nu- How about this one, Dev? The number one seeded Celtics versus the number eight seeded Bulls. They were gifted that, so the Celtics better go ahead and, and take advantage of that. Yo, this isn't clear cut to me because isn't Dwayne Wade coming back? I mean, he's old, but you get into the yeah, playoffs. Man. I don't know. Yo, I'm gonna still take the Celtics. He don't matter. I'm gonna take the Celtics in six. Same here, Celtics in six. He heard right. we got uh, like Celt- I know. Yeah, you Celt- Celt- Celtics. Celtics and four. Dwayne Wade's knees don't matter no more. Plus, he upset seeing his wife getting slammed every week. Go ahead. Yo, all right. Yeah, uh, I'm not upset. We got. <clears throat> yo, that show is fire. We got the Jazz versus. We got the Jazz versus the Clippers. Um, I'm going with the Clippers and give me give me six Clippers and six. Clippers and seven. Jazz got something going down there, man. Jamal, I, like, I like, I mean, out there, Jamal, you know, they got the potential defensive player of the year, in Rudy Gobert. They got Gordon. That meme that Jimmy shared about Gordon was hilarious. Because, <laughs> yo, he changed his whole persona. And then, yeah, man, he got, yeah, he definitely did. Definitely did. Yeah, went from nerdy ball to Jamal, school. Ball. Jamal Crawford and six. <laughs> All right, no doubt. So, on the other Jamal side, Anderson. we got, we got the Hawks versus the Wizards. I'm going with the Wizards and six. Salute to John Wall. I'm going like, to go with the I, Wizards in six. I like them in six as well. And I think we might have mentioned it last week, but there's a lot of people out there who thinks John Wall should get some MVP consideration as well. He's done yeah, wonderful with the team I, this year. He should. I salute John Wall. I salute John Wall because he be on IG, like, shooting his shots with Rihanna. Like, he really be just like, going <laughs> after her. Like, I mean, it's kind of stalkerish, but I still I still respect it, though. So, salute to John Wall. All yeah, right, I so got, after uh, that, what we got? I got John. I got John Wall. I got John Wall in four. Yeah, I forgot I was on the show. John Wall in four. Take it through. Oh, I mean, you me. are BSing and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, we got to get through these, beloved. We got like one minute left. All Man, right, Thunders talk- and Rockets. You was talking about Rihanna. Yo, Thunder and Rockets, yo. Um, I'm going Rockets with the Rockets in five. Okay. Rockets in six. You see what I mean? All right, let's keep moving in. Cause boy Rockets in seven. Yo, Buc- <laughs> the Bucks and Raptors. I'm going with the Raptors in six. Same here. Raptors, Raptors and, and five. Bucks are coming. All right. He's all that. Gri- but next year. Grizzlies and Grizzlies and Spurs. I got the Spurs in four. Got the I got Spurs the Spurs in three. <laughs> Spurs in <laughs> Spurs in five. I ain't gonna disrespect my Grizz brothers. All right. Conley, one of the best and, point guards ever. Look and we paycheck. got the cat. We, we got the Cavs and Pacers. I'm going with the Cavs in four because they better they better win in four games after all the rest they got. All the disrespecting they're doing to this. The Cavs will win in five. I really don't believe that, but I just didn't want to say what Jimmy said. All right. <laughs> All right. We will do our Pacers NBA and awards Pacers next and week, seven. people. Pacers in seven. All right, man. Thank you, good folks, for joining us in the war room. Shout out to everybody in the chat room, Facebook, Twitter. Anybody who called in and got through, we appreciate those we couldn't get to. We apologize. Tune in next week live right here on demand on the WRS Podcast Network for great sports talk. We'll discuss the NBA playoffs and much more. We'll probably get to our MVPs uh, one of these weeks coming up. So until then, enjoy your weekend in sports. Enjoy your week. Catch us right back here next week. 
catch all of our conversations, all of our social media, anything that we do, blogs, webcasts, anything can be found at the hub. The hub is known as warroomsports.com. Also, pick up my book at sportsthebook.com or on warroomsports.com, the hub, as previously mentioned. Until next time, everybody, don't accept mediocrity. Steadfast in the war against ignorance, and we'll see you chumps on top. www.warroomsports.com What? Ain't no more to it. Napa Know How A Napa guy knows more isn't always better. Unless we're talking about full-size vans. These beasts do more than get you from A to B. They have so much space a man can live in it. With shag carpeting, water bed, and a sweet lava lamp, these mobile abodes have all the comforts of home. With quality parts and plenty of Napa know-how, you can keep the original tiny house running longer, stronger. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how.